What's going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back once again, episode 43. I'm your host, Anthony. I, I'm always uh, got my homies with me, uh, Jill, Joseph, and Casey, co hosts, guys I started this shit with. I give the same uh, intro a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep giving that intro now, like where this all became a thing, which is episode one. Jo- Nobody even knows this, but I met Joseph first time on an episode that isn't even on the internet anymore which we should probably do as like a <laughs> year anniversary fucking present but yeah yeah dude what decrepitated tormentation all right enough about all that but what's up guys uh super sick you guys are here with us again uh thank you to all the subscribers wherever you hear us or see us i'm glad that you're fucking checking it out um every week we're here fucking bringing you guys the underground shit bringing you the real shit and this week is no different we got rob and harry from cognitive what's going on guys what's up what's going on bro how's it going i you know another east coast west coast deal (laughs) the beef is real you know how that ends (laughs) (laughs) east coast east coast baby (laughs) on the alluvial episode we had recently too um there was the east coast west coast talk and and was uh, kevin on yeah kevin yeah he, he was claiming that you guys so he's, <laughs> he's claiming that that west coast likes to go fast and that east coast likes to find the groove he was like that he said that was the big difference between the two coasts which i mean you could find I respect that more, I respect and there's still that. I can respect you know, that. but there's like dsi on the you know there's like other things that are, don't really match that too but that's like what his yeah. like blanket like generalization of like what west coast death metal to east coast death metal is cali likes to groove too dude I mean, yeah there's like slamming go fast. how could you go yeah. fast when you're on the beach dude you gotta slow down <laughs> 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 if you're under you a ever pond, tried running dude, on the beach it's hard yeah, as it's, fuck dude it it's slows hard you as down fuck. man i don't run some <laughs> shit brother i don't know <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah oh, so yeah cognitive unique leader records um fucking tell us about where this shit started before that whoever what are, are both of you guys uh founding members no uh yeah you're gonna have to talk to rob about that one <laughs> yeah all right let's hear no. that story then first um i had started with my really good friend mike castro in like 2011 and a childhood friend of mine, Jake Ayanaka, I was like, dude, you want to start a band? Who like He was like a guitar hero to me when I was younger because he's like five years older than me. He's like the reason I started playing guitar. Like my parents went to high school with his parents and everything. So like we've known each other since we were born. So uh, me, Mike, and Jake started the band and uh, went through a lot of member changes. I can't even pretend we didn't. <laughs> but um well, before you cool, get but- into that, I want to know as a artist yourself, like where it all started with you. Oh man, we like to go back that far. Oh, you want to go back? Yeah. Um, I think I think like it's funny because I just tied it in. Like I, I think the reason I got into a lot of music was because of Jake, just growing okay. up and being around him and seeing him playing bands and all that. When I was younger, I was like, oh, I want to play guitar and like. He my he helped my mom get my first guitar for me for Christmas that uh <laughs> at the time I didn't even want I really wanted a PlayStation and I got the guitar and the ornery teenager in me was pretty bummed I didn't get PlayStation One because I really wanted to play Final Fantasy Seven and I ended up playing uh Enter Sandman instead. <laughs> <laughs> for the better. But, uh, yeah, you know, Final I did that Fantasy too, Seven. Yeah. So that's like the that's the style that I never got into with video games, dude. RPGs. Like, is that what I it, like them all? But that here. was just at the time I was like, oh, I need to play that. Yeah. Well, role RPGs is one thing, but there's a specific aesthetic to the Final Fantasy style video game that I, you see a lot of video games have that. But like, there are different style RPG. Like, wouldn't you call Zelda 
right. an RPG too. Yeah, nah, sure. dude, it's an action adventure. You noob, what the hell? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, you dude, I, need to get, I need to hit the books on some video yeah. games. No, bro, <laughs> hit him at the dude. wrong time. He's been playing Zelda for fucking Switch like nonstop. Like, here, just, it is the sickest the fucking game, dude. The Breath of the it's Wild is the sickest shit right dude. now, bro. You He's made passionate about it. Bro, Dude. I mean, my 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 soon to be ten year old is who's got me into it. Like I was like, oh shit, when it came out, I, I was like, Zelda's back and it looks fucking dope. Uh, I gotta get this for me and him. Because, it's overwhelming that new one. It's like I, I started it and I was like, oh my god, there's a lot of stuff to look at right now. Yeah, like there's this yeah. many trees, man. I was like, holy shit. I'm still like. <laughs> I'm playing it. I'm just like, there's a lot of stuff. Like, you gotta worry about like getting hit by lightning, not being in the water when you get hit by light. Like, I'm trying to do that in real life. I can handle all that. <laughs> totally, dude. You gotta fucking <laughs> learn recipes and shit. Yeah, you gotta come fucking on, man. I'm just trying store to store fucking. <laughs> dude, I'm so stoked on uh, Metroid, like su- Super Metroid. You know, like Dread, like that new one coming out on the Switch. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. No my way. buddy's super stoked. Oh on. man, I need to get a Switch now. Dude, yeah, it's the dude. best thing you can have, man. Yeah, you I had a, the Wii. You I, had a, the Wii. I have a Wii. You need to play it more. It's awesome. But the Switch is rad. Switch I've been playing is, Breath yeah. of the Wild too. But, Did yeah. you find it overwhelming? Yeah, I mean, I kind of use the the internet sometimes to. Just... Oh, you're not Bro. true either. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the uh... two fucking yeah. posers. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a generational gap here. Even though you're only like six years younger than me, Joseph is. I had to buy that shit a physical copy. No, I had that oh, yeah, Nintendo I Power. That. I had Nintendo Powers and yeah? Game Guide. Okay. All those. Do you remember them strategy guys were like thirty fucking dollars, bro? Yep, they were fucking dude. magazines. They're thick horrible. ass paper. Fucking no, I'm, I'm had them set up the, in a yeah, the actual strategy. Oh, oh, yeah, I had yeah, them in yeah, a yeah. bookshelf, gotcha. fucking ready for me to reference them if I needed to. I remember uh, the most I got into was Prince of Persia when PlayStation Two. Great game, wow. great game. Sands of Time, dude. Sands of Time That's is you, the best one. It is the best one, dude. I will definitely fucking I mean it's like it sucks because it's like you go back in time, graphics are different, you know, it's more pixelated, yeah. shit moves different, but still it's like uh, overall as a game, that shit fucking rules. Have you ever dude. went back and played PlayStation One games recently? No. Don't, I'll go back don't. and like play Tony Hawk <laughs> Pro Skater and shit just to get some nostalgia dude, or whatever. Uh, oh, we did like, that at Alex. Oh, they, yeah, the remake came out and it's awesome because it's literally the same thing just with updated graphics. Oh, but the same dude, soundtrack? Back, and shit? No, new soundtrack, but yeah. it has the old soundtrack too. Oh, oh it's an option? It has part Sick. one and two soundtrack. Fuck and yeah. You could play, dude, you could play one's levels with all of two's moves. So like you can manual and shit on the first Sick. one. Level. And they will give yeah. you the revert. They give you the revert move from three too, and they put it all only on the levels from one and two. Yeah, because I don't know if I can I can kick flip without Jerry as a race car driver in the background, dude. <laughs> it's what, dude. Okay. It's perfect and it's awesome because like if you you can even change it to the old graphics mode, and when you see that now, you're like, I can't believe I thought that graphics were never going to get better than this because like you see it now, you're like. That's like five triangles in a square. Like I thought this was like unbeatable. <laughs> well, we went through all the bits, dude. We went through the yeah. eight bit, the sixteen bit. What, is, the fucking... what what system is that on? Like the updated one? Uh PlayStation Four and or <sighs> Xbox One. They both have it, and I think Switch has it. Oh really? Switch has got I it. I think. Oh, dude. I, I think you're selling Casey on the Switch right now. I think yeah. Casey's oh, yeah. gonna have to we make just an investment. Show off the rails. Already <laughs> saving so for it, important dude. to you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that game. That game was very important. I that think the best soundtrack yeah. changes everyone's soundtrack. lives. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First what time you guys hearing like? hardcore punk, hip hop, like, all these genres for sure. Yeah. Dude, I, dude, I will still to this day because you recite of that, every dude, lyric of that soundtrack. Power Man Five Thousand, dude. <laughs> Power Man Five Thousand was never so sick until that game came out. So when they, that game they're came a out, shoe in. They're a shoe in because they're on the soundtrack. Like nobody gets. Yeah, like, like, dude, like you, you. It's just like when. The, Tell me, you all know what it's like when worlds collide now because of that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, a little I'm ready known, to go, and I know you're ready to go. <laughs> a little known fact about Power Man 5000 that a lot of people and listeners might not know is that Ty Oliver, um, one of our good friends, he's done two solos on two decrepit albums. He's the guitar player now of Power Man, for the last 
seven years of Power Man Five Thousand now. Just like no shit. he's like he's just, he's good. part of like like th- that band now. That when I was a kid, I saw them actually. So the first show show I ever went to, and the same show Naveen went to. Uh, we talked about this recently. It was Primus, Limp Biscuit, and Power Man Five Thousand, and it was before Limp Biscuit had been signed. It was they were just like Les Claypool just brought these bands out for like to give them a chance or something, and like they both were like unsigned bands. And fucking, it was my first like concert I'd ever seen. I remember just fucking like hating Fred Durst at the time because Fred Durst was like, he was all pissed off at the show and he's just like, he's like, hey, fuck Santa Cruz, fuck you, give me middle fingers, fuck you. Like this thing like, the whole time he was like trying to be all like, you know, like, ooh, you're so dark edgy. and creepy. Yeah, edgy. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, that was the first show that me and Naveen from, you know, Animosity and Entheos and stuff. We were both at that show as children, and that was our first like concert we ever went to. It was Power Man Five Thousand, Limp Bizkit, and fucking Primus? It's fucking trip, dude. Damn. So and I now here you listen to bands that's 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 that sit there and make frog sounds. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Power Man Five Thousand, Primus. What's that? Who was the third band that you mentioned? Oh no, it was Power Man Five Thousand and uh, Limp Bizkit. Oh yeah, yeah, and then Primus. But yeah, Power Man Five Thousand singer is Rob Zombie's brother right so that's like they try to he tries to like not hold that as like a you know, reason why he got famous kind of thing but yeah it's kind of a reason <laughs> probably, yeah. that's, why, that's probably why he went with the sci-fi he's like dude i can't touch horror dude yeah yeah it's it's kind of, that's kind of why horror. you it's kind of why you reference him as that <laughs> exactly i know right <laughs> he tried to hide from it yeah you right, didn't dude. say you didn't say his name you said someone else's I think his name is like Spider or something or something like I mean that's not his name, but that's like <laughs> that's what he goes by, like Black Widow or something. I don't know. <laughs> You're just naming spiders now. You're like, oh, he's tarantula. Like an, no, uh, I think it's no, spider. I'm, I think Australian his name is spider. wolf spider or huntsman <laughs> spider, dude. No, nah, I'm all right, spider. We're good. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, back to the <laughs> fucking yeah. We were we'll being rails. super no, no, cognitive about the, the content of the it's Spider episode. One. That's his name, Spider One. Spider One. Dude. Spider See, one. I got one. I got one right. Oof. Yeah. Or Spider, right? Not one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let's on track. See. So uh, yeah, Rob, continue hanging out yes, with your so, friend. Getting and Zelda oh, say. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, um, growing up, yeah, he like. I was just like, you know, I started getting into the Metallica stuff and then uh then I got definitely went into the new metal phase for a little bit. I didn't go too deep. I didn't go too deep. It was like What's your favorite Bart Metallica Bane. album? <laughs> That's Casey uh, trying oh, to move okay. over the oh, new you metal. What's your favorite? No, okay. no but okay. some roll. What you have to understand some is that roll. Joel and I are the were children of new metal as well so you can continue but before but before that oh, just no, oh, yeah, real quick Meta- so my favorite metallica my favorite my favorite say the right one ride the lightning uh, but i think their no. best is master, it's master of puppets, of puppets dude. Uh, oh yes, that's what are. you're looking for you another say one the knows. right one no, but do you think that's the fair answer i think it's i think that is their best album but it's not my favorite album the Cal- casey was looking to I like his that. homemade Cali Death podcast bingo cards, dude. Did some exactly. master. <laughs> you said Metallica. Okay, so, I had to. So, I had to go there. We have another bingo thing to answer. So, in the new metal phase, what what bands were you into? You said, you said it was kind of a blip, but what bands were you listening to? Oh, that's a new one. Yeah. Mudvayne. Seven Dust is so sick. Oh no, I love Seven Dust. Hell yeah! Um, if if you're gonna put Deftones in, but I didn't catch up. I didn't catch on the Deftones till later. Uh, I was really, and I still am. I love Lincoln Park. All right. Um, I'm uh, yeah. That, I, is that considered was it? Uh, new metal? hybrid theory? I guess, I guess so. Yeah. I would yeah. say Deftones. CD maybe. Uh, yeah. Deftones out of the other group would be the least new metal. I would say probably hybrid I mean, theory. Especially nowadays, is super yeah, yeah. popular when we were in high school, Joel. So it's like you can get not have yeah. those songs. You know, no. I got I got out of new metal. I think when Hybrid Theory was popular is when I was kind of like ba- like slowly Dude, pulling you're away. Only a few I, months I was, older I was than me. Don't right act like it. maybe I thought they were like the maybe they because I was like maybe elitist new metal. <laughs> if there's such a thing, I only like the demos of new metal. <laughs> I only listen. I only listen to Spine Shank, bro. Oh, yeah, I, got, go. I, got, I, got, I got. I got. That is an approved. Of, that's a, that's an approved band on this show. Spine. Uh, yo, honestly, as like a new Spine metal Shank. band, that they, they were. They ripped. Yeah, totally. Alex showed me them a fucking few years ago. I didn't even know about them when I was younger. 
Sick. Joel and I weren't physically in person. We listened to Spine Shank one, like <laughs> last time. One, a minute of a song. We didn't even get through a whole. Day. <laughs> <laughs> that, they were they were my, that they were my blip band for sure. Like I said, I didn't get too far into it. Um, so like that was like just me getting like through the surface, and then it was like uh, then I discovered th- these were like the really life changing bands next. Where uh, God forbid. Nice. Dillinger Escape Plan mm-hmm. and Cephalic Carnage were like three yes. life changing bands. And then I discovered uh, Dying Fetus mm-hmm. and Nile after that. And then it was pretty much all over. Game over. That's <laughs> yeah. A, that's 100% for me, dude. Those first two uh, God Forbid releases, the EP and the full length determination, those were definitely. Not to take it back too much, but I do like that term that you just said. And I want to keep that. Is that your new metal fan, like new metal phase is like after I got through the circus because it was kind of a circus. Like it was kind of like <laughs> like everyone had their hair all weird and like dressed like like, you know, yeah. coal chamber with their like, you know, like fucking green hair. And everything. it was kind of circusy. It was a little like it Berber definitely dang. felt like a. Cir- yeah. Yeah. Berber dang. <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a circus. It's just like this weird circus phase you went through as a kid and then you kind of moved on, you know? Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I didn't. I, I I definitely dyed my goat beard fucking blue at the time. Everybody was, was like, that because of Dimebag or was that because of No, it was because of the mud yeah. singer, dude. Okay. I, was like, I know oh, he had his red, a, but he had a blue that's beard. The thing. But yeah, Dimebag too with his pink beard. So it's like yeah. everybody red. was That was kind of the that was kind of the times people yeah, were just doing was, that. That's shit, all it was, know? dude. It, and then those those times are always looked back on you by like I know. Oh, you look at you, you little door. Yeah. It's yeah. so weird to like, you know, you're in living in that time and looking at those people and stuff and you're just like, damn, it's fucking sick, dude. Like, and then <laughs> like, it, it's just one of those one, you know, it's, you know, you look at the 80s and stuff like that, too. Like a lot of the shit. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Is it going to happen again? Like with what you're wearing right now? Or are you going to look back on this in like 2000, like 38 and be like, Jesus Rob, Christ, don't even dude. do it, dude. <laughs> don't even do it. Rob is about to say he looks like a fucking snack or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was just thinking, like, I don't know. I, I, I think I've kind of hit my comfort zone. Like, I think death metal shirts and black jeans and or, yeah. is, or, my, or my new my, is just my uniform of New Balances for the rest of my life at this. Point. Yeah, I like, think I think maybe maybe that's probably got to be something where like from the age of like twelve to like twenty three or something. That's like the the uniform that you see those kids wearing. Maybe now is the one we'll look back on and make fun of, but. We already went through that's, our fucking circus. You know? Yeah, we already, we already, we already put in our time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We already, yeah, definitely. Real quick, one thing that did happen during that circus that is funny that actually changed how shoes are, dude, was puffing up your shoe. Did anybody stuff? A oh, sock I had the in their shoe? You didn't have and to. my shit lit you up. You just in bought the back. DCs or Etnies. Well, so yeah, that yeah. wasn't that wasn't <laughs> an original thing. Like buying skate shoes before that was not like puffy right, toys right. like that it was kids oh, you're stuffing talking about socks pumps, in yeah. there no it was kids stuffing oh, socks in there that no that, i didn't do that that that, <laughs> that the fashion fat became thing? so yeah really? that fashion became that's a, so I think like, that's a popular thing. but then uh, uh, the company started actually making the tongue fat so you get that well, puffy you know look. what you know what i used to do and maybe i guess that's like an adaptation of it or just wanting to not have socks up to my knees was I used to have long socks. My parents wouldn't buy me low socks. So I would wear them so they were ankle socks and fold the sock up on to the top of my foot. That's exactly and what put, I did. Yeah. Too, okay. Dude. Okay. All right. Well, then that <laughs> was it. That and I didn't even know that I was hip. That's fine. I was doing it. I, I was doing <laughs> it to be hip. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing it to be hip. I was conscious of it. Yeah. It's like, oh, dude, I'm trying to make these socks work. You guys were double yeah. ra- double wrapping? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Double it's wrapping protection. socks, dude. You don't know who you're gonna run into out okay. there. All right. <laughs> I didn't know that trick. I had I had light up shoes at the time. Oh, dude. That's what I said. I had the light up pumps, dude. I would pump them things up. The things would be light up. Oh, BK back. lights. Is that what they were called? BK, BK lights. Nights. Nights. Oh shit. Yeah, if, uh, I, that's I, it. Yeah. I had the uh the famous footwear version, I'm sure, or something like that. But yeah, they lit up. <laughs> No, when I, dude, that was like one of the biggest purchases of my because I was owned a basketball too when I was a little kid, and getting the one with the basketball on it with the tongue, yeah. like yeah. To oh, yeah. the basketball. I had those. I'm for, for sure, sure gonna and jump high. I'm gonna jump so yeah. high now, dude. And the then tongue you gotta is 
filled yeah. with air. You go to Payless, dude. I would I would go to Payless. My mom would take us there, and then they'd have that basketball on the tongue, but it didn't do shit. It was just a yeah. solid little ball. You guys want to laugh? No, four foot three me trapper. thought I was gonna dunk. You guys yeah, yeah. I had a, I had a fucking trapper keeper. Oh, and on the front, What's it up? Had, <laughs> yeah, and it had the sickest shoe on it, and it had it was like wings with like a giant pump on it, and they had like rockets <laughs> underneath it. Bro, I, I like, think I'm I gonna get that them same shoes one, fucking dude. one day. I wanted them shoes, and I was like, I'm gonna get them. I definitely was a trapper keeper, dude. Everyone, dude. I mean, that mine mine was like a skateboarder, like looking down a ramp that was like. 300 feet long with like like a big like fucking loops and shit on yeah, it yours like, is cool and realistic them shoes are not real. <laughs> you guys all remember your trapper keepers like i don't dude, remember my, I, I can't I, remember i, my, my I don't remember school like, um, my shit, it was just some pattern. i don't remember it wasn't school. anything like that <laughs> that's great dude. either way dude having a trapper keeper you felt dope You're like my shit yeah, won't yeah. fall yeah. out oh, yeah, yeah the homework i'm not gonna do is gonna, not gonna fall out dude yeah i was a young like, pro I had a trapper keeper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm so sorry right. we're getting so sick, off track. Dude. No, no, this is what this we do. Is, this is what we do. So, uh, but, so Rob, <laughs> you uh, you went through the new metal phase, and then what? And then uh, after the, the longest over, question uh, ever, God, Rob. God Thank forbid. You. No, God it's, for, it's all he said, good. God forbid, like Dillinger Escape Plan, cephalic, and then you start cephalic jamming and Nile. After that, or like, did you Nile? Did you start like getting Dying bands feeders. together? Dying fetus, Nile, Candyria. So you got the relapse like, dump, dude. That's what you got was the relapse yeah, Candyria. dump. Candyria. Candyria yep. is huge to me still, man. Oh, hell, I love Candyria. That band is God to me. And then mm. uh, aside from them, and then it was like Mashuga was like the next big landmark for me. Mm. And then like moving on from there, it's just been all that stuff. But God, I could talk about Candiri all day. I had to shout the, that out. You guys the, do not get it. <laughs> process of self de- process of self development. Oh, right? you know, okay, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I used to listen yeah, to them dude. all the time. Ken Chalk is one of the best drummers yeah. ever. Who is he drumming with now? He's drumming Fuel. with some Fuel? Okay, okay. I'm thinking of something. There, there's some sort of band with members of Can a drummer of Candiria that started like a super group. I forget what it is. Anyways. Is the new drummer? It. Might have been a newer nah. drummer then. I got no, to experience that at the pound. Close knit, fucking everybody's there. Candiria fucking ripping your face off the whole time. And dude, nobody is ready for their breaks, their jazz breaks, dude. Like, if you, no. if, yeah. if you don't know that band and you, and you can look around in the crowd and you could see all the confused people. You yeah. Know? Well, it's like actual, it's not like new metal where there's like some cheesy rapping. There's like actual hip hop mixed in with like, jazz and like it's just in, like totally like legit styles mixed together it's not your like was your your album by them what 300 percent? is that what it is 300 percent i love control? that one too man i love that one too uh that one is uh, good surrealistic madness oh, them three. oh dude surrealistic madness madness is the first album that i started i also with, so I got, are you I got familiar to... with their last album are you familiar with the last one they put out no it's great check mm-hmm. it out Check okay. it out. It's really good. It sounds like because everyone, a lot of people fell off when What Doesn't Kill You came out because they had to sing in and all. They do that better than they ever did mixed. And it sounds like half of it sounds like 300 percent density. Nice. Fuck yeah. Yeah. The singing oh, yeah. stuff never turns me off. Just uh, life gets in my way if I stop listening to a band, dude. Like something. Candiri is super special to me, man. Like, dude, I'm the idiot in the crowd that's like sitting there, like knows all them stupid breaks. Cause like, I'm, I, dude, I worship that band. Like, that's what's up, dude. It's, I it's, love that. It, it, yeah. Anybody who is listening right now that doesn't know that band, please go check it out. Candiria, New York. What up? And they, they mix a lot of hip hop in there too, dude, which yeah, is yeah, dope. Yeah. Like, he he's got some flows, dude. He can. That's what I'm it. saying. It's not. It's not like a. It's not like a Fred did... Durst like flow. It's like a actual like legit like hip hop verse. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like, whoa. That band's damn. really inspiring. But yeah, <laughs> that that was like really impactful to me, and that was kind of like them burnt by the sun. Like like you said, like a lot nice. of them relapse bands, Origin, all that stuff came onto my radar, and then like Suffo and Cryptopsy, and yeah. then that was pretty much like smooth sailing for them <laughs> yeah dude i mean that's that's a good download all that shit's fucking you're set after that dude definitely you know so, so uh, harry, harry yeah 
You Harry, what's thing. up with you, dude? Let's get a little no, story on don't you. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. No, dude, you got a, you got a, <laughs> no, you got a great me. headset going. You're ready for Halo right. after this. No, I got I got Turtle Beach, dude. I got I got Tyler, our bass player, sleeping behind me in the room. Oh shit! But, uh, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's dead. we should have put him he's on dead. the flyer, dude. I, <laughs> just him sleeping. Yeah, too late. <laughs> I mean, I can go in there and get him on, but uh, <laughs> shit, I don't know. I mean. A backstory. Where did Rob start? Because this has been a long journey of distractions. Well, just a quick um, run through of start like from Metallica, you know, when, Harry. From I mean, Metallica. <laughs> start when no, music no, no. became important to you, dude. That's all. It I is. mean, not even, not even that. I mean, uh, so my my dad's a musician, always has been my whole life, and he was in original bands, cover bands, blah blah blah. But he plays keyboard. He's disgusting. I have to give props to my dad, Hell Harry yeah. Senior. But uh, but no, are he, you, are he you got, true junior? Are you a true junior? Yeah, yeah, I'm a true junior. Harry nice. Bartholomew Lannon Jr. What nice. a middle name! Hey. Take it in, take it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I grew up around music my whole life, and uh, he he was more into like Yes, Kansas, Genesis, like Led Zeppelin, you know uh keyboard rock oh yeah pretty much yeah anything um so he was all about that and he always tried to push that on me but he always had like some shit that would bleed over into more hard rock or like 80s metal like whatever and he he was very big into black sabbath ozzy osbourne and skid row he gave me my first cassette tape when i was like 10 years old so that was a big influence on me and I always wanted him to teach me keyboard, blah, blah, blah. Never happened, but I just fell in love with like the sound of a guitar lead, like all that kind of stuff. So kind of more from there, my uncle showed me Metallica for the first time, which is why Master of Puppets is my favorite. Uh, that was, that was, that was, that was the first Metallica song I've ever heard. And I think I was like eight years old. I'm screaming master at the top of my lungs, like in this back seat, like, that and then he would put on god smack voodoo after that and i thought that was badass no longer do but uh <laughs> so first record i remember listening to uh, yeah Dude, i bought that the day out. it came out yeah because of the, yeah. the, the fucking <laughs> i mean hey whatever it's god smack man wait, they do what they wait, can do wait. they do it well. but i, I again but, uh, <laughs> I've, re- I've revisited it didn't hold its uh weight yeah, no, 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 no. It doesn't hold up. <laughs> it's nostalgic at this point. But the, I got super... Band. It's a what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the tattoo. Yeah. It's like, the train, like a, a, band. a band that's associated with that tattoo. That I wonder has. how many thousands of people have that tattoo on them. That sun tattoo or whatever it is, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. Who yeah, was it that was talking knows. about that? How like you'd get drunk and go get that tattoo? Like drunk and get a I feel like tattoo. everybody in the nineties got that tattoo. Fuck, I'm so glad <laughs> I didn't do that. on their lower back, just ready to go. Right? I think it was there was a also like an artist a, talking about it, how he's like, I did that yeah. tattoo like hundreds of times. Yeah, because like, it was like kind of tribal, but not, and that's when tribal was like huge, and everyone regrets it now. <laughs> <laughs> now it's nautical uh, stars, yeah. and those little those is little it, sparrows. Is it? Is it okay to pass it off as like a, a metal band or as a tribal tat? Like what's what would you pass it off as if you had it? I would just I say I listen to a lot of God's man. Okay. So the band. Yeah, he's gonna own it. Yeah. He's gonna own it. For sure. Yeah. I would say tribal. But <laughs> 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 I'll go down that road and sit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, where does it go from there? So yeah, I don't know. I was heavily into Metallica. And that's kind of how I met a lot of people in grade school that were playing guitar. I got my first guitar at like 14, whatever. And um, starting bands with people, we got into like Slayer, Metallica, Testament, Megadeth, uh, all kinds of bands. Uh, Morbid Angel was another one that was early on Cannibal Corpse. Um and we just we're all trying to like learn their shit like recreate it and everything and unfortunately the early 2000s came about and got into the the more melodic deathcore or 
melodic metal, like Swedish death metal type shit. So I got, I got really into the Arch Enemy, yes. uh, you know, Carnal Forge. Uh, man, so so many bands that I haven't visited in a long time. Into Eternity was a big one Fuck for me yeah. for a while. Is that which the one is like so? They got like a out. cancer concept album, right? They do, yeah. yeah. Scattering um, is, that, is that the scattering? Scattering of ashes, or no, incurable tragedy. Incurable tragedy. That's what that's it is. One. So yeah, I got really into like power metal type shit and like proggy stuff later on, and I was kind of like in both both scenes at the same time, where I was kind of dabbling in death metal as well as like proggy uh, power metal and just melodic stuff, which is. I think it was because like the guitar was singing more in those things for lack of a better way to put it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I fell in love with, with like eighties, like hair metal and all that kind of stuff, like just eighties rock metal. So I kind of went from there. Um, and I think that's why I like to solo and do that kind of shit so much. I like to really like dive into that kind of stuff. But, um, You know, from there, I, a little into a little bit of everything, but eventually when I met up with Rob, I mean, I, I was I was jumping around from band to band. I was in uh, a few of my own, Kill the Evidence, uh, Blasphemous I joined. I was in Single Bullet Theory at one point, just trying to, like, gain my footing, you know, make my rounds and really... Uh, get my feet under me as a touring musician or a musician in general. And um, I gained to know Rob and a door opened and he asked me to join Cognitive, I guess, 2014, 2015 when Jake left. And that's really, I think, when I dug my foot into like the extreme death metal scene and kind of brought my own flair to it, I guess, because... Mm-hmm. With cognitive, it's like it's really erratic. It's really like death metal. It's 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 very heavy and disgusting at times. But then there's always that melodic break, and there was that before I joined with Jake as well. So like that that was really intriguing to me that they mixed that melody with death metal, and here I am. I guess you know. Definitely. Totally. No, I noticed like kind of a kind like, of a jumbled story, but no, I, I def- no, no, it's no. all good. No, I, <laughs> I uh, was listening to your guys' album um, today, driving home from work, and I was listening. I think it was from the depths. I want to say it was called the song name. Um, but no, I noticed the the variety of different influences in there. It went from like, you know, like kind of heavy, just like brutal, crushing death metal to like almost like a carcassy kind of like old like super old school part in there that i was like right. really digging on it really like kind of almost That's brought me one back I didn't mention carcass yeah 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 that i, I yeah. felt i felt like a carcass kind of like you, you shot it, it definitely worked in the song definitely it just came out of nowhere to me but i was like because i was like i was grooving and it just felt like this kind of like old school kind of like vibe that you guys threw in there that was really cool and uh yeah so i mean i can tell the variety of influences that you guys have from like technical to heavy to old school i mean w- was was there like a, a main so when you guys were starting the band what was the what was the i mean as far as the to get the sound of the band what was the the vision of what you wanted the band to be there was no like rules and it's funny because i said this in another interview the other day but i was still like, no hey, rules yeah <laughs> rules i uh i ref- I, I it was just like dude i don't want to be stuck going okay we're just a brutal band i don't want to be just stuck we're a slam band i don't want to be like oh we're just like a gent band or something like i wanted to be like okay we can do heavy shit and then get into this like melodic rock riff or something or hey we're into this weird into the moat part or candiria part or you know what i mean i just i never wanted to have them rules and it's cool through the years watching the band progress and just like, I think we're maturing more, but like, I still think like it's cool that we can pretty much do what we want. And like, I, I think we make music that like I would want to listen to, which is cool. Cause like, I don't listen to, I never like, especially with the last record, I'm not like, 
oh, I wish we did this or that different. Like I'm normally having them kind of feelings like most musicians mm-hmm. but the last record. I'm like, I want to listen to this. This is cool. Yeah. This, this Definitely. past record for sure. When it was done, I was like, man, this is, and I was on the last two prior to malevolent. And mm-hmm. this one, when it was done, it was like, this is, I'm through and through no problems with this. Yeah, yeah. Like there was were, always, were, you know, there's always a little something here and there. And even when yeah. you listen years later, you're like, ah, I wish we did that. And I'm sure I'm going to have it with this. But this one immediately, I was like, this is, I'm cool with this. Definitely. No, I definitely feel um, just listening to you guys, um, you know, listening to the album all the way through. Um, there's, you guys are definitely like, I have a feeling this is a, this is a Cali Death exclusive. I'm just kidding. Um, I feel like in the next, <laughs> I, th- I feel like by the next album, you guys are going to be pretty fucking big. I have a feeling. I'm just calling it out right now. So oh, I appreciate that, man. So, I mean, no, I, I just have this feeling because you guys have this kind of, um, it's, uh, I don't want to word it like that. It's kind of like, uh, it's, I don't want to say accessible, but um, it's not, that's not the word I'm thinking of. It's definitely like leading on to something that could be um, like really big. Like, I, like it's everyone it has a groove to it. Everyone can he- he- bang their head to it. It has a bunch of like different influences in it, and I feel like yeah, listening from like your earlier albums to the to Malevolent, like uh, it's, it's definitely on to something that's gonna. I have a feeling is gonna be pretty big. Like I'm just saying, so stick with it, guys. I'm just letting you know. No, I appreciate it. Um, you know, I I feel like where we're going with the band and like the way it feels like it sounds now, like it almost reminds me of like Silent Circus era. Yeah, between the Barry to me in a way. I kind of got this. That's that's almost like the exactly what I'm referring to. Is like, it's it's definitely got its own style. It's fucking sick. It's solid. It's fucking got really cool different parts. But I feel like in the like the next album is gonna be your big album. I just have a feeling. I'm not not the, hope. I hope Unique Leader isn't listening. To this. Ouch! <laughs> no, it's, it's no, 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 no. But uh, because you're building fan base right now, it's not just because of the album. I'm just saying because you're building fan base, you're getting people to listen to you. You're on a label where you have a lot more ears. You know, you have a cool like fucking press release everything's awesome and more people are going to start listening to you and i feel like i, I do you- want to shout out the pr company hold tight i got to i got to shout them out they lisa has done nothing but amazing things for us with this record I, and i have to shout her out there that, i've noticed um, it i've definitely noticed this it. has been the best pr campaign of our that's any exactly album. exactly what i'm referring to it's just like for the sure. way that this is coming out and and the the way that it's being presented to someone like you know that hasn't really heard you guys or ever seen even your fucking logo like your logo is we've actually, had yeah we yeah, it just we, feels I'm like it's sorry to work. interrupt no it's all we've good. had all a good. lot of people say that this release more than i've seen before that uh you know people are like i've never even heard of you guys like how how exactly like, this, is, this is insane and i'm like wow that that's cool to hear but that's like why R- also, Rob yeah up like how yeah. <laughs> how are you well, hearing of us now that's why Rob like, bringing up Silent Circus you know. is definitely like a, a perfect point. Like it's kind of like, I feel like it's yeah, your Silent Circus album, and and now yeah. like from here it's just going to be nothing but up. You know what I mean? Like now you got the eyes looking at you. Now yeah. like people that have so. never seen your name and stuff like that. Now you have everyone looking at you with a cool press release, cool everything. And I feel like yeah. from now yeah. on it's nothing You're but up. Their next album will be Alaska. That's the one after yeah, yeah. Silent That's Circus, pretty, yeah. right? Yep, which that's pretty much what I'm getting. By the way, is as my long, as long as every song is backwards marathon. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Those two albums though, are my favorites. By the I way, just saw them true. last week, actually in Philly. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna uh, see them. Or work, the uh, evening Joseph. with between the bear to me. They're doing a, a great misdirect all the way through, right? Dude, that's one. Yeah. That's like my favorite album. So, Ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's like, the only I reason I went, on. and then they did that whole set where, uh, dude, they played. They played everything. They didn't play, you know, they didn't play Selkies. Like, fuck that. They played Backwards Marathon. Sorry to spoil it. No, it's all good. But I'm, no, I'm super stoked. No, I'm I'm going down I'm to LA a, for it. I'm a first two. It was albums. awesome, man. I'm yeah, he is, he's done. And a, yeah, and, and some of Alaska. I love the first one, too. I'm not, I'm not dogging that one at all. Those first three or actually like my f- colors is sick as fuck too though it's over it's, yeah, it on. might be overplayed Great mystery. like yeah yeah colors because everyone refers to colors always with with between the bear to me that's like what they're linked to yeah. but 
Great yeah. Mr. Ed was great, dude. Great that Mr. went on the radar. Favorite. They if you guys radar. are uh, if you guys are between the buried and me fans and like that newer stuff, you should definitely check out Leprous. Oh no, I'm obsessed uh, with Leprous. I have like 20 shirts of that. All right. Jill's, Yo, Jill's I band, love Leprous bro. too, but you're just yeah, yeah. like throwing some left field shit. That because... is a little left field with the I mean but, <laughs> Yo, but, you're I always mean, looking you're, for you were talking about trapper keepers it. earlier, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're speaking my language awesome. though, man. I, I, well, I do looked... have to say, last last album that I, Leprous that I really really loved. Rob's gonna hate me. Is Molina? Yeah, that was I the like last that one. one. The best, that one has after, the more progress. After that, that was on that right? best one. Yeah. After yeah, that, I mean, they um, got too slow, too depressed. I'm out. Yeah, no, I, it definitely turned more cinematic with uh, pitfalls. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and they're gonna go that way again with this new one. I've already that's, kind of already fine. see the writing on the wall with it, but. Um, I mean, actually, you know what? That new song they just released um, has like a lot of Molina in it for sure. It has like some Molina leaning shit. But um, yeah, no, that that yeah, that pushed me towards the whole like prog metal. Like I started going like Leprous is the one who started me into that, and then like then I went to like you know I like Haken a lot, and I like uh, Caligula's Horse, and I like all these like random like bands that are like fucking so talented. It's like. And you like, protest, you watch the, protest the hero at all? Protest the hero. I don't. I don't like That's the singing. Yeah, I, I really want to like this. I, really, I mean, I love the guitar playing. I love the music. Is like some of the most insane shit I've ever fucking heard. To be honest, he's a little eccentric. That. He's a little yeah. eccentric. But to me, I mean, the vocals just don't. I mean, I think he's an amazing singer too. I'm not saying I don't like the singing, like like vocal, like as far as like I get musically. It. I get it because I tell yeah. people, I'm like, dude, I love that band, but I can see I why like people them. wouldn't like it. But yeah, I, it just I seems like the them. vocals don't match what I'm listening right, to so... behind the, you know, I mean, but I'm, I'm he's nailing no, he's like Freddie Mercurying shit, like he's yeah, killing. He's amazing, man. Yeah, he just I don't just, feel like it. I was laughing to myself because. uh Actually, one of their songs is my alarm in the morning because the vocals are so fucking shrill <laughs> to the point where it wakes me up in the morning. Every, yeah. So, yeah. all right, I'll, I'll give you a pass on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but that little guitar player, dude. Fucking so wait, I don't get it. Christ. I have never heard this band, and you're telling me that at times. Protest the Hero? His vocals. Yeah, I've never heard it. No. It's, um, it's like it's like Dillinger off, Escape bro. Plan. It's like Dillinger Escape Plan and like. That band left sweeps. It. Yeah, all over the place. <laughs> it's super technically talented, proficient. It's a lot. And the See, singers all over the place. Death really metal screams, clean singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His the voice can, doesn't turn me off in pro- projects as a vocalist. It's you know what I hate? Of- it's the falsettos. Yeah. The falsettos piss me off. Well, and I, mean, I, I like Leprous, but like yeah. his piss me off. I, I know, like when he gets ter- raspy and mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just feel like the way I just his vocal patterns with the falsetto stuff is kind of yeah. the only for behind the riff. It just kind of like mm-hmm. ooh, it's, it's kind of like Doesn't shocks fit. me a little bit. Doesn't Sounds fit. like a little like they're two things fighting each other a little bit to me. But exactly, um, fit. I, yeah, I but, love that you guys like all these abstract bands because a lot of times when we talk, yeah, about I was them, a little <laughs> yeah. I Dude, when I mentioned into a yeah. you guys were like fuck yeah, I'm like yeah. All right. yeah. Here we oh, go. Yeah. Did you guys know Stu Block is back in the band? I was going to tell you. I was going to ask you if you knew that. Yeah. yeah. Dual, <laughs> dual fucking vocalist. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you knew that. <laughs> Joe's <laughs> eyes lit up when you said it in eternity. Yeah. He was like, whoa, dude. I fucking love it. Oh, dude, I love that band. Come I'm, on, I'm, man. I'm thinking about doing a, like, starting a Twitch thing where I, like, stream playing along the entire albums and Buried in Oblivion would be, like, one of the first albums well, I do. Then that's sign like, me, I learned sign me to, up. Learned how to play <laughs> some of those, like, double bass dude. patterns because of that that was one of the inspired inspirations to go uh, that's one of that's one of those albums that i can go back to over and over again yeah and that's not even Stu block on vocals but he was one of but so tim sings a lot not not all uh, yeah he does he does the low vocals and he also does the harmonies but the singer on that album is not Stu block i can't remember his name so he joined on the next one yeah, as their lead vocalist. Yeah, which always surprised me is they have like too many good vocalists. Like even their backup vocalists yeah. are like good so, enough to be. They're from they're from Canada. They're from Canada. Yeah, they yeah. all almost they have wired they have it all as kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have all the musicians. They're That's kind of like with the uh, Leprous, like uh, seeing their live shit, like their backup vocal harmonies and stuff that the you know the instruments have to do. They just nail them like. Like yeah, perfect. Like it's where are they? Like, where are they from? They're Norway. from Ice- Norway. Norway. Okay. okay. Uh, I thought you were yeah. from Canada. I, I thought was like, they were like maybe Iceland they are sick up like there, dude. <laughs> no, no yeah. they are. I mean, think yeah. of any, 
sick tech death band probably from canada <laughs> yeah. Canada is the king of no, death we metal. just have recently talked about that, dude. It's like Cryptops and Gorgas. Cryptops and Gorgas. Yeah. Ion are two Ion very Dissonant. important yeah, bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ion Dissonant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are three big ones. And uh, Beneath the Beyond um, Creation. Beneath the Massacre. No, Beneath Beyond the Massacre. Spire's no, Icon. Obscura. Art Spire. Art Spire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King. Yeah, Canada's got a fucking yeah, solid, dude. solid. Once you really sit down and think about it, you're like, God damn it, dude. I know. I think Archspire is like, <laughs> like listening to because I've always kind of like, for some reason, kind of pushed away from them. Not recently, but you know, years ago. Um, and then like seeing them live a few times, and then like watching exactly. that. Uh, what's what's that guitar player that he has a really cool podcast? Uh, the Dean uh, Lamb. Dean, Dean Lamb. Dean Lamb. Watching yeah. him like just play those songs while talking to fans and stuff. Like he's like answering questions yeah. while playing like Archspire songs. And I'm like, watching him play. And I'm like, dude, that's yeah, like fuck him, dude. perfect. Like, <laughs> like he's, that's like literally one of the tightest bands I've ever seen. Like that's, for how legit, crazy that, they deserve yeah. all the praise and hype and attention they're getting, man. Like, I think they're the most important thing to happen to tech that since necrophagist. I could I could get behind that. that. I could definitely statement, get behind brother. that. I, I could get behind that though. I said the same exact thing to Casey Howard. Okay. In 20 Dude, who has who I has mean they're very they're, they're, they they are up there in influential like status at this point. Well, just like, like the how insane you can't they take are. the crown from Necrophagus. I'm not saying I'm saying they're on the Sorry. their peaks are equal on the fact that Necrophagus came out and then it was like and that set the bar. Oh no. And no one's such a sense. And then it's been it's been on cruise control. I Maybe feel like, if that makes sense. And then this came out, and it was like, this is some next level shit. Yeah, it took yeah. that bar that we all grew yeah. up on. We all grew up on the deeds of flesh and, and your spawn of possessions and, and necrophages. I think spawn of possession list. was the next one who maybe touched that bar, mm. but oh, I yeah, still yeah. don't think I still don't think that they took that crown because like it's just so monumental what they did. Yeah, spawn position. I mean, if you talk about the, the the crown, like if you talk about a cr- like a crowning situation, yeah. I, think, oh I don't know God. if it's a crown like situation. Close, it matter. I think it's more like wrestling it's belts, not. dude. It's, it's, it's like a, yeah, yeah. And there's people that will will argue with you either way, going like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Sorry, I just but, hold, I hold, I hold epitaph to such. Oh, dude, it's an incredible flawless. level. Yeah. It's flawless. That like like for that time, in what 2004, you're gonna get that recording quality like that yeah yeah like are you kidding me to this day i've it exceeded like 100 listens sound like I, that could you confidently <laughs> say you've listened to the album more than 100 times i guarantee a million you gone times. Over 100 times yeah 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 I probably it's crazy because that's times. how i am with relentless mutation by art spire like i i mean I, yeah i've listened to that probably 100 times too but like yo i got the sheet happens relentless mutation print to put in my studio i'm gonna frame that you shit. do but yeah, yeah. along Band's with yeah. amazing man a lot of bands really, really cool. good they're just pushing it okay. man they're just pushing it with speed they're pushing no. it with yeah they're good we gotta get the, the like, well here. written it is very well written because like when i heard lucive collective mm-hmm. i was like this is wild but it's a little over the top and i remember that and when relentless mutation came out i was like oh my fucking god this is perfect I remember yeah. I was telling you about them, and you're like, "Yeah, well, you know, tech death no, is tech it. death, right. and blah blah blah." And like, I've heard it, and like that, this is impressive, but like, you know, it is what it is, and like, you know, there is bands out there like that. You know, it's just like impressive to be impressive. But when Relentless Mutation came out, yeah. you were like, you changed your tune right away. You were like, "Yo." Well, it's impressive. This shit is fucking and crazy. With good, good songwriting too. So it's like exactly. impressive. I, it's, 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 I think that's where they finally met in the yeah. middle of that. Totally, yeah. totally. Because a lot of bands were just like wheedly wheedling, you know, like trying to do their crazy right. thing. But they like yeah. they did just stuff that, like like crazy. Yeah, that they're doing stuff that like <laughs> mortals can't use. Most people can't do, and then making it sound catchy too. Like that's the two things that, that really, really made them. That's a really important band. So's uh, Psychroptic. That's oh, another yeah, 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 god yeah. here. Yeah, God. So we now we get Dave on. Get, Shout out, yeah, Dave. We, yeah, we had Dave from Psychoptic on. That's like literally one of our, yeah, one of, from growing up and getting into tech death with the unique leader thing. That that was like Psychoptic spawn severed. Uh, that was like I would have never been able to talk to Dave in, unless so this show. Have you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have, like, have I, and you 
Sorry. Continue. No, I, I was just going to say that I would have never been able to have a face-to-face conversation with him unless I went over to Australia. Because, I mean, just, Cycropic, You're just talking about the, get, the, the, having the back, podcast and stuff. Yeah, th- that's yeah, what's yeah, yeah. so cool about this shit is that it's giving, you know, selfishly opportunities for myself to be able to talk to people from all over that I would have never been able to before. Well, I know. toured with them, so. You guys want to hear a really good wow. story? I knew you were going to come with some bullshit like that. <laughs> you guys no, want to hear a good, that a good one. This is a good, funny, psychoptic story. So me and Harry Stupid. are like big fans, big fans. And it was right after their self-title came out. Yeah, it was right after self-title came out. And, and we, we see them and we're like, these guys are amazing. We get, you know, a bunch of merch and all. So months, it, it was a couple months go by and we're on tour. And we pull up to Walmart, and I've got my Psychroptic hoodie on. Harry's got his Psychroptic hoodie on. Mm-hmm. I have a Psychroptic hat. The Psychroptic self title I'm sitting right in the front of our van, the CD. In the Dude, window. it was on the dash, like yeah, blatantly. On the dash. <laughs> Check this out. We pull up, and we see another van with a trailer pull up in front of us in this Walmart in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, yo, you s- how funny would that be if that's a band? And we're laughing. And then, like, we're like, no way. And we you get saw out, Todd like, no walk way. out. It's fucking psychroptic pulling up <laughs> into this walmart while we're all psychroptic out in gear and we're just like hey, hey guys like that's the biggest synchronicity that's probably happened oh my <laughs> yeah, god yeah. Dude, guys. Just so, like it was sick i we felt like, like such a out. little bitch <laughs> <laughs> why did you, did you guys talk like, oh, just like oh gear. there they are and then i'm just like yeah i'm about to go talk to fucking the Haley's like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, so like, like, I need right to take the, I need to take this shit off. I was like, yo, get that out of the dash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we had Todd Stern like come over. He's just like, oh, you guys go to Walmart too? Just like, yo, you guys want to smoke weed? Like, oh, okay. Yeah, it was just, it was just like hanging out. I was like, this is crazy. All right. Yeah, dude, you gotta <laughs> roll with those, though, dude. You're like, fuck. I'm just, I just was going about my day, and then boom, yeah. I'm in the situation, and I'm with these Aussies, fucking psychopath. Yeah. Oh, no, it was crazy. You guys are in Frederick, Frederick Kirk, Maryland, or something like that. Yeah, you guys got a great scene out in Cali, though, man. You guys got so many good bands. Hell yeah! I want to get back out there. I mean. Dude. It's cool to see, like, when you look back on the thing, you don't understand what's going on in the moment, you know? And then you look back on things, you're like, oh, shit. Callie fucking was working for the last couple Dude, of decades. Dude, Callie, you know? not for nothing, like, because, like, I'm your age. Like, I remember, like, dude, Discords was, like, so influential to me. Like, I remember hearing Diego and all them, just all the riffs and, and Ben and everyone. and just Shout out to the Riff Wiz. Oh, dude, oh, all that Diego. shit. Like, dude, that is dude, that is fucking Riff Lord shit, dude. Yeah, that dude. was the fucking nastiest shit. Like, I remember, oh, my God. That I, shit. Find the Cali like, sound and then just do it over and over and over again. And yeah, many, but many, it was like, many, that many was super riffs. impactful. And then it was like, uh. You know, then I started finding the Archaics and the Kennedy Vales and then, like, Fallujah. Like, that was, like, so important to me in my 20s. Holy oh, hell, yeah. Yeah, the Severed Saviors. Nice, dude. Yeah, yeah that I was- mean, dude, we were, we were just fucking hungry, creative people that all kind of fucking bubbled up at the same time dude and i say we're like we're not doing anything we got shit in the works you know shit's still working and uh but yeah just it's it's cool to be able to claim you know yeah i'm from the cali death fucking you know generation (laughs) (laughs) cali death podcast i mean it is a thing though you you guys were in the thick of it you For guys sure. were in the thick of it, and you're you're a part of it, and that's so sick. Because like over here, you just go, "Oh, there it is!" Like like yeah. I found it on the internet. You know, and I mean, you guys are like sitting there. And playing I mean, them. I look at the Florida scene like that. I mean, I'm too young to have like experienced that in the moment, but still, that's another like bubble up scene that was happening at a different time. You know, and it's just like if Cali is one, I'm not saying that Cali was as big as Florida. Obviously, Florida fucking killed it, but like it, it bubbled up for some people, you know, and, and, and to be a part of that is, is super yeah. honorable, dude. Like, like 
to look back and be like, oh, dude, I contributed to something that people still to this day are like looking back on as an influence now. And you're like, oh, we helped the ball roll. We made the ball get a little bit thicker as it was rolling down the hill. You know, I, a- I, I, I definitely think that in a, yeah. in a way, Cali doesn't get enough credit for like how much it contributed to like extreme death metals specifically too. like or was- hip hop. Maybe that, I'll say over hip hop. There's know. plenty. Of, I, I don't want to go off in a deep end, but there's plenty. It got, of it, got, it, got, it got quiet. It got <laughs> it got washed out. It got washed out I'm by the gangster kidding, shit, kidding, but like kidding. the conscious the conscious shit just was really booming the whole time. But it just didn't make it as far as the East Coast because New York had some fucking dope MCs that were coming out of there too. So it's like ah, but. Yeah, but I don't did know they have blast is, beats? Like... Did they have fucking blast beats? <laughs> I mean, blast we brought it up. Rob, on, we brought it up on the, Rob, the Jeff, Rob, the Jeff podcast. Back. We brought on the, on the Jeff podcast about like how big, like from the Florida scene that we brought up a couple times, so is how big death metal got. Like we weren't around for it really, but it yeah. literally, like Jeff was talking about, like my brother has talked to me about it many times too, about like. How like what he said like Nile or like a Nile and another band like went on tour in like San Francisco and like sold out like it'd be like like Friday Saturday sold out <clears throat> they'd do two shows back to back sold out two thousand people and like and then they played San Jose the weekend before or the week or a few days before like Damn. it was death metal was like hum- like no one really really ever Driving talks about there. how big death metal was like in the early mid nineties. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like, dude, like, I, and I mean, praise be to all of these ones I'm about to name, but like, dude, Cannibal Corpse, mm-hmm. Morbid Angel, Death, Obituary, Carcass, you know, fucking Theosai. Napalm Death, like all of them bands Atheist. really mm-hmm. paved the way and did so much hard work yeah. to bring it where it is as it is, let alone them bands all still fucking rip. But yeah. like, like you said, like them bands from that era, like like they could just go play a show and like you can find grainy footage of like any venue anywhere. I would just be like, they're going to play, and it's just people were there, man, because it was yeah. new and it was this, and it's interesting, man, just because like I just seen a ad today how like it was when Metallica dropped the Black album, like everyone's at the fucking record store, like oh ah! yeah, screaming and like we, you know, our age group definitely missed that. <laughs> Nobody for did sure, that for yeah. any but of our albums. So sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sick seeing like that footage and also saying, like, dude, we did get to see a lot of the sick death metal bands that like just still paved the way. Like I the only band I never really got to see that I wanted to see from that era was uh Death. I never got to see them. Yeah. Nor That's did it. I. I remember that's one yeah. that I would love. That's to have one of my on favorite us. bands, honestly. Oh yeah, dude. One of my all-time fucking favorite bands. I mean, all their shits. Dickhead great. or not, but like musicians upon musicians upon musicians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it spawned so many other bands. Jesus like, Christ! You know, so many Everyone other copied projects. That shit, but, man. Yeah, yeah. And Chuck would always have an all-star lineup, no matter what yeah, lineup he exactly. had. Dude, they're all fucking stellar. Yeah musicians you know that were just only one of one of my all-time favorite bands forever you know what's weird about death is that like i literally i don't know if i even told casey about this but i literally skipped death and didn't want to listen to them i don't know why i just didn't didn't like i didn't like it and uh what era were you getting shown at the time um i wasn't really i was on my own kind of like showing i was like you know i was going from like so, so went like new metal to like Sepultura, Pantera, Slayer to DSI, Morbid Angel, and to just like trying to go. And then, like, then it started to like, then I found like the Necrophagist like demo in 99 when I was, you know, like through a forum or something. And so, like, it all got skipped for me. Like, that all that shit got skipped for me. And, and when I, when I uh, started jam with Odious, then like they were all about death. So I was like, Huh. They were like, dude, they're it's so mm-hmm. sick, blah, blah blah. And so then they showed me death. Like after I'd already gone through all that, like spawn, Do you remember spawn the session. first the first uh so. song or album? Uh, pro- probably yeah, like well, what's Mountain the f- or something. So it was something uh, like that. symbolic. Uh, yeah, symbolic. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was okay. Yeah, but they were yeah, like Casey, Casey one of my and uh, David were Casey David. I remember Risha, uh Matt, they were like, you know, from Decrepit, they were like all about death. And I was like, huh. Like I was like trying it was like already like 
I was already skewed by the That's fucking like classic metal to you at that point. But I was skewed to <laughs> I was skewed by like I mean if by, you're listening to like Necrophagus and then you go well, to no, death, no, no, but like, like well gateways Crypto of annihilation Mountain. Gateways of by uh, Gateways of Annihilation by Morbid Angel and hearing that double bass and that once uh, opening of the gates that one double bass it's like a, I don't even know yeah, Joseph yeah. you probably know the BPM of that but it's some sort of insane BPM <laughs> it's just fake as fuck but it, I thought it was real because I'd never heard edited drums before but I heard that and was just like like basically like immersed in this like speed like wanting speed and crazy drumming it's like so then like to go back to like uh, not to go back, but like the the drumming of death was more like progressive and more like it wasn't like yeah. it wasn't like like yeah. ridiculously origin speed. It was more like kind of like rushy, kind of like proggy speed. It wasn't like on so that like, album for but, sure. Like yeah, I mean, you go, was, yeah. But like but you, individual thought patterns was my introduction. Oh um, yeah, oh yeah. And that was like great, a perfect pocket great record. That the bass dude, playing yeah. on In that album form. made it so for great. me. Great. What, are you, what were you gonna say, Casey? No, yeah, totally. I was just gonna say, Joel, if if you remember, Dan never really got into death. He just didn't like it. Yeah, like, he was no, the other guitarist with Odious back in those I mean, days. It's still a death metal. Thing. I liked it a lot. No, I know you Come guys on. all were. We, we were, were like bumping, <laughs> bumping it all the time, and yeah. um, especially hanging out with the decrepit dudes at Dan the time. Dan just like, never understood it. He's like, I yeah. I mean, I I definitely. I mean, it's not in my top ten death metal bands for sure. I mean, just the way I was, I know, whatever, I skipped it. Oh, uh, just yeah, fine. Fine. No, you're not offending me. No, it's fine. It's, it's my my far toes far. are curling yeah. on my sandals right now. It's but not, you're not, it's not for everybody. <laughs> so it, I, it hit my sweet spot over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and, and I've learned <laughs> yeah. a bunch of songs on guitar, and I've, I've, I, I love, you know, I would randomly jam with uh, Decrepit. We'd cover a death song live and stuff, and I loved it. Um, it just was like, it always seemed kind of like, you know, like it's hard to explain. Like, if let's say, like you start with something, like probably what the kids have to deal with today. They start with spawn opposition. They start with arch spire. They start with <laughs> fucking the most banana shit. They start with insane shit. Then to go back to the building right. blocks, and then you go, and then they go listen to Terrorizer, and they're like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, like, yeah. And there's but, like, well, there's certain ba- like to go from like the most ex- like things that have already progressed from the building blocks, like from yeah. from the right, original. Right. They've already progressed but, so far, and then to go back is, is, is was a lot harder. Like, for yeah, me. It's like, I don't like that. Like, well, yeah. It's like going I've back had, to Sabbath. I've had the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll say yeah, uh, I just went on a thing. road trip with with my homie Tony, and he was like not into death because he's like, yeah, I heard Decrepit Birth before I heard Death. So like <laughs> I heard I heard all these same riffs with blast beats behind them. <laughs> so, so to hear them with skank beats behind him was a little it's underwhelming. So funny you're talking about Decrepit Birth because I was listening to Diminish Between Worlds today because I was like, dude, man, I remember hearing that and just being like, it's like if death was still a band. <laughs> and like i went back today and listened to it. i had a lot of fun because i just i remember a certain point in my life when i heard that i was just like this is so fucking cool and i remember being so happy when i heard it and it was really cool that i hear it last listening to that i was like wow there's like certain metal records death metal records that like really hit and i remember like hearing them for the first time you know it was another yeah. one i'll never forget Go ahead. the first time my buddy showed me to christianize Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ! God, uh, same, like, so, same, same. <laughs> everyone yeah. can remember just being like, "Wait, dude. Dude, the guitar player played that on the drums," and just my dude. eyes lighting up like, "Oh my God!" And then yeah. like halfway through, wanting to cry because the middle's so beautiful. Oh and, God. Yeah. So I know. Uh, I mean, tra- that whole album was full of just like the brutal, punishing, punishing, just yeah. blast beats everything and then all of a sudden it's just like here's the most beautiful thing you ever fucking heard yeah yeah, yeah it builds up into the beauty <laughs> the like, whole like, album that was the whole awesome. album uh, man, did I you guys ever see that show with dave suzuki playing it and with glenn benton and T- tim young on drums and that whole like lineup mm-hmm. no. I've got no. One so, so. no i i didn't see that lineup no I yeah, did. Did. Or is that glenn Dave's wore a mask and he wore the fucking yeah, i've seen them live but not with, not with that no my, my yep. buddy's seen Dave Suzuki play the drums because whoever was playing drums that night got hurt, and Dave Suzuki jumped behind the kit apparently and oh, played the ball. Oh, oh crazy! Crazy. Was that Earth. the one at Voltage? No, Earth. no, no, dude. This was way years okay. ago. I was about to say. You guys, do yeah, you guys I remember the first time you heard Cryptopsy? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. that changed my life. That's actually I don't give that enough credit because that was like the first death metal. So riffs Joel and I. Guitar. Talk about the luck of the draws and how we would buy shit just off of cover art and all that shit. And none so vile was one of those covers. I was like, oh, dude, 
I need to get this. And I, I think I got none so vile and win whisper supremacy. That's you get, that's yeah. my favorite. I didn't by get them. Uh, I didn't get blasphemy part. made flesh because it wasn't in the bin. Know, that's probably blasphemous. But so I got I got a nice taste of two different, you know, cryptopsy albums that are both totally different in their own right. Mm. And and I was able to get a f- whole feel of like what this man's about. Like, oh, they can they can change. Mm. I and, love them and they are so important to me, but I didn't get it when I first heard them. I did not get it. I was like, oh, this, I know what, what, what was it about it? Lord Worm? Every, well, first, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, the Lord yeah. Worm thing, I was like, whatever, <laughs> but like, it sounded sloppy. I didn't get the riffs and all. And then like, when I went back and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't catch on to this. This is mm-hmm. the most intense thing. Flo's my favorite death metal drummer. Like, I love his ideas. So I, at- that flow signature blast when they were on our our episode yeah. uh, on our episode on our fucking podcast um joseph's got it we got we dug into it and he it was literally out of frustration in the jam room they're like go faster and he's like, what like this and he's yeah. just like oh yeah yeah like that and then he just like started doing that like aggressive just like oh as fast as he could go well, what i've always told them like especially when we got to like fucking hit the road with them but like they're just this breathing unit of just like there's no like a click track would be like a, like totally blasphemous yeah. in that. and, and it doesn't for that even band, make sense it wouldn't they're be just like th- their speeds just change and they, they change live and they change show to show and they change yeah they're, just, I, they're I like a breathing the human, band i like the human feel of it and like dude like I, dude i like dude uh once was not that drum production oh, yeah. is one of my favorite drum productions Hell ever, yeah. man. And, and oh, I, yeah. I really enjoy that album, dude. That I really, dude. Do. I think it's one of the most underrated death metal albums in history. I think yep. that album. I was is always so- a Lord Worm fan, though. Too, I like how he had his different. And then you, Desolvo, for life, baby. And I know, Desolvo, a- I'm a Desolvo guy. Well, yeah, obviously, <laughs> I'm down with fucking Mike too. Well, like, not because he's been on the podcast twice, but because like I, <laughs> no, I, really the had, guy. I had his he's fucking, a I had it, it, yeah, I had, I had <laughs> him, Daniel Begg was my shrine over you my computer as a kid. Homies, like, so. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. like literally, like, that's what got me into Cryptopsy was the mixture. I went, of him I went and, and watched some uh, live Cryptopsy videos with Mike just after the podcast because Mike's such a fucking awesome dude. Like, after two episodes of hanging out with that dude, I want to have <laughs> way more episodes with him. Mike, yeah, yeah. you're always welcome, dude. I love that. Um, but watching him get down with Cryptopsy, I'm like, fuck, that is that is a live set that I I am disappointed that I didn't get to see. Cause yep. he's fucking he's in it, dude. He fucking has fun when he's up there, dude. I can tell. He's pissed. Yeah, that, that he's rips, pissed man. and pumped, dude. Yeah. And he's a huge guy, dude. And you're just like, fuck. I'm so glad, <laughs> so glad he's sick. my friend now. <laughs> he's come back to the states, dude. He's got my back, dude. Hell yeah. So, that so just a little, little quiz question or, or you know, like research. If you had to name your favorite album, like death metal album before 2000, what would it be? It could be a death album. It could be whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before two thousand, death metal. Album. Yeah. Uh, shit. Is it before two thousand? Just curious. What you yeah, yeah, it is. is. Yeah, Morbid is it... Angel Covenant. Is it? Oh yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. That's like it, it, it is. Sorry, yeah, three. I think. Yeah, it's yeah. Old. Way, way before. Yeah, that album's sick. Fuck. I think I, don't know. I think that might I think that might have oh, to covenant. be it. Yeah, that was earlier. I was thinking of domination. No, that's covenant. It's like yeah. Uh, oh, yeah I can't tell. Too, I can't but... tell. I'm thinking about. It. I'm having a fucking panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be one. Just one, dude. I, I can't know. decide between. I, yeah, honestly, honestly, yeah, I just. I just. The sun. I can't pick. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say Pierce from Within just because it's an easy one. Oh, and it's, Jill. I just, I just it it makes me feel comfortable when I say. Oh, did he say? Damn, you're taking this way more serious than I did. I just wrapped one off. Despise the sun or what? What did you say, Rob? Wait, did, despise the sun or what? Despise the sun or whisper oh. supremacy, and they oh, came okay. out oh, here, and it's so hard it. to fucking do. I don't do this to me, guys. Dude, I really yeah. like you guys. supremacy, dude. I'm despise gonna do sun. it for you. Despise the sun right. equals pierce from within. That's like you know, 
What would yours be? What would yours be? Yeah, Casey, you go. Oh, mine? Oh, about- Pearson Within, dude, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. Despise the Sun. Like, if, if that could have just been like a deluxe package, but... That's just a... I mean... I love Doug's drumming, though, <laughs> in a different way than I love, cool, like, Dave's, you know, like, Cool Ross. Um, God, they're both, like, the best. What do you think, though? We've we've said this before. Like, what if Despise the Sun was a full length? How would it compare well, to... Well, there's those... Within? two tracks or three uh, sorry is it three tracks on uh conquering the throne that were doug cerritos that were like i heard we're gonna be like new cepho ones but then spiritual holocaust dude, yeah that totally is a cepho song um dude. so Satur- I, I, or, yeah. I think the interesting thing to put in perspective too is despise the sun has no guitar solos <clears throat> except catatonia hmm Oh, (laughs) not that long though, but it's the classic one. I'm a poser now, too. (laughs) (laughs) There's shit about Zelda either. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Yeah, Anthony, how about you go? Jesus. I said Pearson Within because it's easy. Now, so I said that I know I took the easy one too. Well, I don't say it's easy in the sense that, like, oh, I'm just going to go for it. It's like, that's the one. It's hard for me to really pick one. And that's the one that I always get drawn to as if I'm going to represent. Have you blasted that album through like a loud stereo before? It's the best. Dude. Dude. But uh, I'll just say, like, most today. I jammed like, it today. Dude. This is gonna. This is no one's gonna agree with me, but like this is kind of like my upbringing from like Slayer, Sepultura, blah blah. blah was uh, Once Upon the Cross. It was like the one that like oh, like the yeah. grooves in that and like the how oh, pissed yeah, like man. and how much I believed Len Benton's anger and like how pissed he was. <laughs> like I like I but believed that he album. was like an angry scary dude. Like I was like y- you like, wanted a you wanted to burn a cross upside down in your I forehead. know that's what I was yeah. like Jesus this guy is fucking dude, I, I remember that seeing that shit when I was shit. younger. Like, I couldn't believe that yeah. shit. Just yeah. seeing like his face upside down cross and shit one of the sickest voices ever and it's funny because like Oh, I'm yeah, not. I'm not going to pretend I'm some like huge DSI fan, but every time I listen to them, I'm like, why don't I listen to them more? Yeah. And my favorite album by them, Stench of Redemption. Okay. Oh, man. okay. Oh, is that yeah, the yeah. one with the with the guy from Ice the, Earth? The uh, yeah, the guitar. Uh, I forget his name. Ralph, he passed away. Uh, Ralph Ralph, Ralph yeah, you, Santolo. Rest in peace. Yeah. yeah, they can riff, yeah, yeah. dude. They can I riff and make your head album. bob. That's what it is. I they fucking. Can... Go ahead. Sorry. No. Which which album is it for you, Casey? Dude, I was just gonna say, like, I fucking Legion? love that album. Like, I was sending that to you guys, like, I don't know, like, while well, they had that one song. Century Redemption has the song that's basically like their version of Dechristianize. Exactly. Where it's just like yeah. it goes, it's all crazy, and it goes, dan, 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 dan. it goes, goes super yeah, but, like melodic in the middle of it after being pissed all the time. But he's uh, like, he's like Jeff Loomis style. Like his solos are like so. But it's like, it, the only thing that I don't like, don't you know, the metal in me is like. Yeah. Well, he did one album, so it's like it was one yeah. one-off album right. that Roth Santola did for Ice Earth. Like, it's not like wasn't the whatever the f- the brothers or whatever. It wasn't like I the old school was. shit. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't them. It was Amon. yeah. It's just basically like some dude that shredded his whole life through like one of the best like old school shredders of all time, Ralph Santola. But uh, yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like a like a all star lineup. They're just like, oh, we brought in some shredder to just change well, our sound, kind of under the DSI monitor. But- what yeah. about Legion, dude? Let's just, I know. you know, yeah, Legion is like, yeah. if, if the recording was more, I mean, it sounds rad as it is. It's like insane. But like, imagine that like, with like, su- like with like the nowadays and kind of like well, compression so recording, like my, my crazy. revisiting Legion, I was like, oh, this is where Emperor got the vocals from. Cause I thought like Eson just kind of came up with that shit by himself. And then I'm like, oh, he's probably listening to Deicide and getting that like triple vocal thing from oh Glenn. you're saying like the low high low mid like high, the sacrificial all, suicide stuff yeah but just yeah. like the over yeah. the top like the literally like trying to sound like satan like so, i guess there were bands like venom before that but like, sc- i mean this scared me like i was like scared yeah. of yeah, like deicide like all the other yeah. bands like they were like they were like whatever like they were like death metal but like like glenn Benton was, watching him sing why live, is he not like, a voice actor fuck? in hollywood why is glenn Benton not like <laughs> i know the walking dead all the like <laughs> You know, my favorite the, story that from that uh, was early it? too. Monsters that Inc. was like Inc. early, Inc. early nineties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go, dude. My favorite that story, which actually early nineties. I'll just say it because uh, what's his name? Uh, Trevor from Black Dahlia told it on I think a uh, interview once, but he was like on tour with uh, Deicide, uh, was Black Dahlia Deicide, and like, <laughs> fucking uh, Glenn Benton was backstage and just did this humongous line of coke, like, and then walked away from and just looked at everyone. It was just all. 
this shit doesn't even get me high anymore, dude. <laughs> just walked away from it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fuck, I think that's dude. on the Black Dahlia DVD, but I think like like, like literally like he's just a scary dude. I don't know. Do I don't want to talk try, about it. Try They're... burning something else into your face. I don't, I know. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Exactly. They're playing LA two, <laughs> two days or over the yeah, weekend. Yeah, they're playing on Monday in fucking really? Sacramento. It's not going to happen. Are you guys going? Gonna... It's like three hours and I get to work day. Like there's, yeah, I could go there if I wanted to not sleep. And drive drunk. I would want to see. Uh, <laughs> I want to see internal bleeding. <laughs> internal bleeding is on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, fuck bleeding. yeah. Shout yeah out we need to get out. them on the pod. Mike, Mike, Hell Caputo yeah. or uh, Caputo is playing yeah, drums on the Caputo's playing drums. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that right. Yeah, sick. I've been seeing him update. That's awesome. I'm glad yeah. he got to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that internal bleeding's out on fucking tour right now. Hell yeah, that, yeah. That's totally sick. I wish we were out on tour right now. How do you guys feel? How do you guys feel about uh, impaled? Fuck, I think Casey just left. He's the impaled guy. I don't really know that band too well. I mean, uh, what they were the reforming? Are they doing? What are they no, doing? No, no, just no. I was just we were talking. We okay. were talking about old school death metal bands. Oh yeah, dude. Metal I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm town. Bay Area native, dude. So oh, yeah, impaled yeah, yeah. was impaled. part of like uh, I would see impaled like once a month almost. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> really? <laughs> Holy shit! So, I just they open know, up like, a bunch I, of big shows. The way that I remember, it's probably like you know quarterly. I would see them, but going to the pound like all the time. Impaled was on mo- a lot of those bills, you know. Like exam yeah, Impaled Ghoul. Cool. I mean, that's yeah. that's they were East Bay, and yeah. we were you know San Francisco Bay. So it's like they didn't have that much of a drive to get to us. Same with Exhumed. Like Exhumed was a band that I always saw, dude. Guaranteed. Yeah, I've, I've seen Exhumed a couple times. I'm sorry, I'm asking you guys about your Cali shit. It's just fascinating to me because, like, we didn't get to like I've never seen Impaled, and like that's like a band that like, I, I, yeah. I like them, man. And like Exhumed was really important to me too. And, and what's uh, really it almost feels what's like really- Impaled was. i I know they were around for a while, but they were like almost touching go. On, in our area like they they're not they're not around anymore as of what 10 years ago at this point so with those so, bands with those bands i was gonna say that i got spoiled because i would always get the home turf exactly performance exactly. you know yeah like that was home turf for all the bay was the pound so you see a bay area band at the pound they're bringing their fucking they're bringing the goods you know That's they're gonna fair, and that that actually is like a part of this thing that I love too is like to you kind of do just rep your fucking area, and when you're in that right. area, like there's enough love uh, in the community that'll be there to support you, and then that brings better show for you as an artist. You know, like the positive vibes is what makes it a fucking party, dude. I, I think the the one thing we got spoiled with from our area, and, and they were super influential on me as well, was uh, Dillinger Escape Plan. Oh, Dude, yeah. that would be such a fucking killer local. Did band. you go to that show, by the way, at at Kung Fu Necktie? Did you make was it into that show? I the forget. last one is it the last show that they played. Is it that one? Like, no, no, I no. no was, the last show they. It played was one there. of the last groupings. Like, no, they, they played. Play- they played all the show at Kung Fu Necktie, but I didn't go to that. But the last show, that was like a hundred person cap venue. Yeah, that they, they played, played you, like they played Union sold out Transfer. immediately. They played Union Transfer, okay. and it was that was the last show. And they played with Car Bomb, and that was fucking. Oh, amazing. Wow. oh dude, Car Bomb. That's a Jesus bucket list Christ. band for me. To see. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Who Car Bomb? Ever since the first Car-Bomb. one. Man. Car Bomb. Oh, Both of them. Well, I've seen Dylan. Amazing. I've not. Yeah. I have not amazing seen Car Bomb yet. Amazing. And I've been a fan since the first. Thank record. you, Rob, for booking them. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Dylan, are they planning on tour? Are they, are they is Car Bomb touring? I mean, is there any plans for that band at all? I haven't really like looked. Well, into they it toured. The last, they... What they did was with Periphery. Which, okay. yeah. oh, I know Misha loves that's them. That's the story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, but Periphery <laughs> Animals as leaders and them, they were great. But dude, seeing Killer Dylan, fucking. Like, I, 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 it's Bill. crazy, dude. This Dillinger got so big. Great band. Great yeah. band. Dillinger, Dillinger yeah. Joel. Sorry. We went yeah. to a music festival together at Shoreline. I think it was Shoreline. And Dan was playing too, but Dillinger was on the bill. Um, Body Count was on the bill. 
I know you were there, dude. Am I Dillinger fucking... was on the bill? I think yeah, it was. They were. Uh, no. Yes. No. <laughs> that was the most compelling <laughs> argument. No, yeah. No, I've oh, never seen that at right. Shoreline. You never saw him at Shoreline? No. No. I was there man. with that same show you're talking about, too, though. But yeah, really? no, I mean, Fuck. yeah. Oh, yeah. Candaria, right, well, Candaria was another band that was special to our area. We would get seen a lot because, like, New York. They're from right Brooklyn, there. right? They're from Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah, but that's what I was saying. We had New York bands like Suffo, Suffo's yeah. there, uh, Dying Fetus, Dying yeah. Fetus from Baltimore. So, like, them bands were all like all right there. Jersey's more like a hardcore scene. Is that true? Uh, just like hardcore. That's like because we're near Philly, so like we got that scene, and, and I'm mm-hmm. appreciative for it because there's a lot of sick bands in that area. But like, there's a lot of hardcore. We Jersey, we had yeah. some cool like death metal, like dude, Mortal Decay. Okay. Oh, Mortal yeah. Decay's from Jersey, and like they've been it's at it, mix. you know. It's a mix. So they're you know they were there. Uh, God forbid was Jersey. Uh, sure. Burnt by the Sun was Jersey. Uh, Eric Rutan's from Jersey. Go Birds. Nice. <laughs> All right, I want to ask you guys to run us through like each of the cognitive releases and just talk about the band for a while and like how the sound developed, the membership changes, how each member contributed. Yeah, just yeah, give yeah. us a little um, bit more of the the band history. So when we started, yeah. it was just me. Um, it was me, Mike, our drummer Jake, and our original singer Shanir, and we did the EP. The Hard Swarm with Joe Sincata, who's uh, he does live sound for Suffo. Smoking Joe, shout out. <laughs> no, and, we, uh, we we know Joe for sure. Oh, okay. Smoking okay. Joe Sincata. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Fucking sick. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <That's>, that's, <laughs> yeah. He did sound for Decrepit like when we hooked him up and paid him. And, like, he was oh, like, that was probably oh, perfect for him. Oh, he's the best. Trying to smoke, dude? That guy's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that dude's awesome. Love man. that guy. Shout so out we, to Joe. Fuck yeah. yeah as we're recording, as we're recording our <laughs> album, dude, you want to yeah. smoke before you record? Like, no, Joe. No, <laughs> no, Joe. Like, no. Continue. <laughs> so awesome. we uh we, we busted out the EP. Mm. Um. So I'm trying to think. So we did the EP in like 2011, and it, you know it got well received. Um. We went and so then after that, we got a bass player. We got a new singer, Jarrell Sh- uh, Schneer had left and we moved on to the self titled and we busted that out with Joe as well. That got picked up by Pathologically Explicit. We we're like, oh, this is cool. And, you know, I think we did our first like 30 day headliner and stuff like that. And uh, we nice. got to do like, I think. I think that yeah, I think that was the tour we for, like got our first real tour. We did a tour with Condemned, Infernal Revulsion, and Wormed when they came over. Oh nice. fuck, you guys got to yeah. tour with Wormed? Was that yeah, the one? yeah, it was only like eight shows because they can only come over here for like so long. So we did mm-hmm. that, and then um, yeah, I remember that album <clears throat> when that came out. That was really sick. Extra, what is it? Extra Mortis or whatever the name I, of that. I'm, I'm I'm talking about your your guys' self titled. Oh wow. Well. Yeah. Oh my bad. I'm so hyped on Worm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but also Exodramos. I understand why. Yeah, because all of us yeah, were like praising Tony Worm Cole right did the moment. artwork, and yeah. uh, then we moved on. And and Jake, as we started touring more, Jake was just like, dude, like I can't do. You know, the normal shit we all go through as you get older. I can't tour all the time, kind of thing, and I don't want to tour. So That's Jake, when you started like, talking to me on that tour, correct? Yeah, yeah, no? Jake. Yeah, 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 because we were on that. And tour. I told you to like go, you know, screw yourself. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked Harry to join, and he was like, "Yeah, but I can't commit to this tour. So like, we'll catch up when you get back." And um, same thing with our bass player; he couldn't really tour at that time. So when we got back, Harry was like, "Yo, my buddy Ann can play. He would love to do it." So them two jumped in and we started writing uh deformity and it was like really cool because uh unique leader was interested and we were like wow like we're gonna be able to do like stuff and get like real artwork and all that and like we were like we would get like artwork and, and fucking music videos and everything like this is like really cool so um you know we did I mean, tony, tony's fucking Oh, I'm not taking uh, it away from Tony. No, I'm just no, I know, I know, I know. 
Yeah, yeah the self titled oh, no. artwork. Tony's, dude, Tony's sick. fucking. I still love the self titled artwork. I'm not taking yeah, Tony. I know one of the mean. best. And Tony. shout out to Tony Cole because he is one of the most humble, yeah. kind hearted people on the fucking planet. And he's dude. been around since. I got the pleasure of meeting him yeah. in Texas at uh, uh, what was it? Building Temples of Death Fest. Oh my god, building temples. Yeah, I'm yeah. Playing, uh, he was the man. I'm playing a festival next month and he's doing live art at the festival. Sick. Fuck dude. yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Dude, that guy has dude, when I met him, he had like a smock on, like he was getting ready to paint the whole time. Like I think he was just like always about it and doing it. It That's was so up, cool. Dude. He loves his art and That's he takes so much solace in it. I think I love Tony Cole and, and I I love that people still use him. Yeah, he and was, I think he's he done- was yeah. making a footing twenty you know, fuck, it's gonna be crazy to say this, but like 20 years ago dude yeah yeah, yeah. damn For real. dude we're he's a great guy our shit 20 years ago <clears throat> time's dude. flying dog we're old as fuck god <laughs> no i know so god. then uh what we do so then we do deformity um we do some more touring and our drummer had a kid and it was just like time like yeah man like i get it you know what i mean like you got a kid to worry about and all so we get our buddy Arm in the play, who used to be in uh, Corpse uh, Order. Um, no, um, no, 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 no. Um, uh, Omni Elliot. Omni Elliot. Yeah, yeah. He used to play in Omni Elliot, and he joined. He was really good friends with Ann and Jarrell, our singer. Same thing. He just like, dude, we toured too much because at that time we were touring a lot more. Like we did like art, some runs with Artificial Brain. Um. Oh fuck yeah. We got it. We've got put on. Shout out Oleg. What a we got put on a shout with them. Uh, Oleg, I can't, I can't even think of some of this stuff. A uh, devourment needed a couple somebody to play with them for a couple dates. We did some stuff with devourment around that time, and we just got too busy. Um, Syopis did like three reunion shows. We got to play with them. Oh, god, so, like oh, we were Jesus. getting busier and busier. You had to play. See, on you guys have all these shows? like hidden gems that like me and Anthony are like creaming over like silo yeah you're and all. definitely like, throwing so out tons you did that now. you did that you did that before i was in the band because i attended that show and oh, i man. lost my fucking mind when Cyopus <laughs> went on that's i remember that's scre- that, that, that i remember screaming yeah. i remember screaming audibly screaming <laughs> at like what he was doing on guitar and like i didn't know what was coming next and all of a sudden it was just a complete pause and i'm just screaming out loud. He has like wow, literally Tyler. like he has songs where it's like literally like it's just all tapping. It's all yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Neo, 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 neo. Mike Gilbert, like, he's a fan. He's a big fan too of the first Psyopus record. He's yeah. always talking. That's about it. So it. so that little guy. known fact. I'm pretty sure this is correct, but I remember Doesn't like microdose on shrooms and shit to like. Oh yeah, shit. he's all he's all that like, thing? He's, okay. he's all okay. uh, whatever you call. I have a feeling I know where he's going to go with this. I know where I think Joel he's all funny. Oh, yeah. So, so, okay. So this is, yeah, this is where I, I remember like him, um, entering a, a guitar center contest and winning yeah. the guitar center <clears throat> contest, like nationally, like won the, wow. like, oh, he national, won. He, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like he actually like won and cause like, he's so creative and different. And, um, what do you get? Like he plays a guitar, like, <laughs> <laughs> Did you oh, not hear he me? Just, he just, he just, he just, he just yeah, he got like recognized, but yeah, back in the day. Oh shit. <laughs> you were definitely lagging on that. <laughs> Say that all what you just said again. He just had a stroke. <laughs> 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 um, no, no, he was just like, he approached the guitar in such a fucked up way that I'd never seen before. Like, uh, yeah. like, and still, I mean, it has a Dillinger tinge to it for totally. sure oh, totally. yeah, it's for that, him, yeah. it's that for metal that's why right. that's metal. aggressive like almost like abusive way dissonant, of playing dissonant that's why you love weird. it so much rob he yeah. was a really good he was just a really good guy and uh yeah we got to play a couple shows with them we just we got busy we just got so busy and people couldn't commit and I don't have any fault for anyone for doing that. Like, I get it. It's hard being on the road and not paying bills and stuff. So we ended up on Matricide. Shane stepped in and he had filled in for Jarrell before. Cheers, California. So. Nice, dude. Sierra Nevada. What up? So we bust out Matricide, which I thought was like a really like just a, a big step forward for us musically and all. And like Harry was like able to, you know, really step in on the solos and all and 
we started touring more. <laughs> you know, we real that's when we were like, dude, like let's <clears throat> really step that up. And Armin, Armin and Ann were like, I can't do it. We're getting too busy. Like they they were riding it out for a while, but we were just getting so busy. Like we went to Europe. And we just had yeah. more and more stuff coming through and they were just like, I can't do it. And, uh, AJ, our drummer who recorded major side was like, I can do it. And he was like, I can't do everything, but you know, I, I can do what I can. And I, you know, if you want to get fill-ins, it's fine. And, uh, and he had gotten some like really good job where he was just like, dude, like we're touring too much. And his job had him on the road a lot too, where he was just like, I can't do it. And you want to do a grown man shit, man. Yeah, yeah. So he did that, and we got Tyler, our bass player now, who we'd known <clears> a while <throat> from him playing in other bands. And he's snoring in the other room. Yeah. And it was wild <laughs> because that leads us into <laughs> okay, we got these guys, we got the band going. We played, you know, we did some touring in the past, you know, before COVID and all, and we were really busy. And okay, we're going to start worrying about writing for the new album with the lineup and COVID hit. And we had maybe practiced together three times in like the following February. And then it was literally nine months of sending each other files back and forth. And the wildest thing to us was we had never seen Tyler record or like really play with him in person and be like, okay, he needs to tighten up or he's got it. And no. it was just, yeah, he came into the studio and he knocked out like three songs in like maybe three hours. If that, and Damn. like, I, I know that's not, like, he was, not, he was, he was pretty much the most first taking everything. And we were like, Oh fuck. And I was like, yo, I need to go to bed. Like this dude's good. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, it was like, we were all texting each other. Like, dude, did you just do that? So like we had not, we didn't see each other, it. and he absolutely crushed it. <clears throat> Fuck yeah! So, we've been I mean, very. Fortunate. It sucks that we have to go through lineup yeah. changes and all, but we're very. Got to say, drummer wise too, it helps to have someone who has a fully functional professional studio and can play his ass off. Like you guys, you guys have heard half. That dude's a fucking monster. You've heard under oh, yeah. it, like dude can fucking play, but okay. like he's, he's a he's total awesome. pro and like to get those two guys after all that and to write this album with them has been like nothing but a pleasure That's and awesome. in such a weird in such a weird way to be sending files back and forth in like a weird situation i feel like it only helped the album because yep. i feel like if we were in a room we would just like pump out crap and be like this sounds great and all we're hearing is like doesn't matter like yeah, we were yeah. really hearing the bare bones of shit. Like, does that even really sound good? Like, and I, I think we were like we were we were able to nitpick a lot more. I feel like, and it also stopped us from touring and taking, and we had more time to pay yeah. attention to stuff. Exactly, too. we would have exactly. been on the road and shit. So yeah, and we're you know we're not the only band that had the right during COVID, obviously, but uh, it was definitely yeah, no. totally bizarre to us to be sending files together. But I think it works for the benefit. Yeah, so let you do like moving kind of forward. Sit back and I like marinate on it. You can marinate and like listen to it, yeah. like drive drive to work and like listen to shit and like really like. Oh my god, you, I yeah. listened to everything so much. I was like really. Yes, he does. Looking back, I'm I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm proud that we spent so much time on it because I I like I definitely think it's our best, more mature effort, and I, I think it really. I don't know. I'm just proud of it. That's all so I can say. Do you guys like? I know because you know you have the the new album coming out and or ca- just came out. It came out right. Obviously, yeah, yeah. I'm listening to it. Does uh, it come out? Damn, Christ, dude, uh, it's on Spotify. Wow, damn, I'm no, I'm just you Jeez, okay, dude. Okay, okay. What's your street date? Homie? No, I'm just <laughs> damn, dude. Um, so, uh, so are you guys because of the you know like what I was mentioning earlier, like the the great promotion that you guys have got on this album. The great like yeah, the boost that you guys have gotten from like this whole like press release and stuff of, of this album coming out. Are you guys getting any tour offers? I know right now it's kind of a fucked up situation where like especially with that we were just talking about DSI, that DSI tour. There's a possibility that thing doesn't end or that thing ends randomly. You know what I mean? Like it's that's, it's that's, kind of it's uh, really one of those... funny you're saying this because like we've got it's a Rob offer. question. Yeah, we've gotten offers and we've got stuff in the works we can't talk about, but I mean I, it's funny you said that because like we've had the conversations of like yo like 
we got to you can't be sharing fucking blunts while we're on tour and stuff like that. Like, like you know, we don't a lot do that of- anyway. We never <laughs> do that. We've never done that. Yeah, fuck sharing, but, dude. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 there's got to be selfish. a lot of being. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be a lot of being proactive and being safe yeah there's no you know, I, sharing a bottle sharing a i mean if it's alcohol a it's like funky a, it's cigarette like a, whatever it's like a bottle it, of like just hard alcohol safe. or something you know even like, when we are on tour but like but yeah lately but man you like guys this are gonna past get week s- too no, has right, been right. very eye-opening to Sorry to interrupt everything. Oh, no, but, it's all good. It's but, yeah, I was gonna say, how but I'm feeling like we're we're thirty times. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh, I love it, Harry. You're living your life. You're drinking. Well, are you drinking Bigfoots or are you drinking? What are you drinking? Sierra Nevada. What? Toledo's. Oh. No, I had a torpedo. Torpedoes. I had one. Torpedoes. I had what one. I say, Toledo. Toledo. <laughs> no, I had one. Toledo's tormentation, good. dude. I'm just with everything kind of getting put on hold and. All that shit. Like we're trying to plan tours for late fall, early winter, and all that stuff. And I'm kind of wondering how that's going to pan out. I'm trying to go to Vegas in like October, and I'm trying to wonder how that's. Yeah, gonna I'm going pan to Vegas out, in know. a week for Psycho Fest. It's probably not um, going to be as. I mean, bad. Oh, oh, oh that's right. That so. is next week. Damn. Yeah, it's so like, you'll probably uh, be fine with that. But yeah, I mean, um, I know you're I mean, gonna I have think- to wear your mask. Yeah, that's but the only thing is, I, card, I, well, well, luckily that the the one thing that I do like like about it is that I'm looking at the lineups and stuff of the day, like the, the they release the lineups, like the daily lineups, and pretty much there's only like a few bands I want to see outside. There's not really many bands I want to see outside. It's mostly going to be in an air conditioned, nice Mandalay Bay area where it's going to be like not 130 degrees outside, and it'll just be like. You know, watch like cephalic and you know, I have to watch like oh, cannibal dying fetus outside. Vitriol. Which yeah. Vitriol. I'm going to check vitriol out for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be actually you guys are going to make fun of me. I actually really want to see uh, Poison the Well play. Why not? I'm no, not I'm not going to make fun of you. Of you. Crazy? No. Oh, yeah, you're from Why the East Coast. I was, of you? I was actually just listening to them like two days ago, which is East Coast people strange. are like way more open. I remember like one time our friend Josh. Nah, was, like, Kenny well, is great. probably super jealous. No, that was me at like age fourteen. So uh, yeah, yeah. No, Pat Kenny's right. going with us, Anthony. Oh, okay. Then he's not jealous. <laughs> he's fucking soaked. <laughs> We're sharing a hotel room, dog. But uh, are you guys sleeping together, uh, head to foot? Sick, dude. Oh no. Sick. He no dude, answer. He, that's the <laughs> second time that I, on a punchline, Joel freezes, yeah. dude. I'm freezing oh, right now. I, you guys are all freezing right now. <laughs> Kills your it, says your, it says my internet connection is unstable. So, uh, uh, but so but shout, out, okay. shout out to uh, Dan Kenny though. Uh, my my yeah, you should restart. start probably Joel. We'll have to edit this. No, today. no, no. It's a it's a Wi-Fi signal thing. I see it over in the corner. All right. Um, going, Dan's going too. Oh, Dan. Yeah, he's Dan going too, and he he got us. His buddy works at Luxor, and fucking got us all upgraded to like the fancy rooms, like two fan like the fanciest nice, rooms connected to each dude. other. So it's me and Dan's room and Pat's and his buddy. Oh, you guys are gonna room that we can rage, open the door. It's dude. gonna be like a fucking humongous, like fucking apartment of just like ridiculousness. So nice, yeah, it's gonna dude. be insane. That's super sick. We're dude. probably yeah. gonna get sick. But... Thanks for inviting me, dude. <laughs> Thanks for inviting oh, yeah. me. <laughs> and I totally, you I'm totally jealous, man. I haven't been to a show in like two two years almost, man. The last show I went to was Abysmal Dawn and. Um, Vader, I was at Damn. that one with you. Yeah, yeah, that was the last show. That was I a went good one. To. That was a good one. At the old Milk Boy. That was a great show. That was the last show I've been to, man. I, I, we, what was the, and the last show we played was with Cattle Decapitation uh, and Atheist. Was it? Nice. Oh, it was. Yeah, I thought That's it was a with, uh, right fit for an autopsy, but no. Yeah, you're right. That was the last one. Oh yeah, that uh, that Cattle Decap show ruled so hard i'm scared to chime in because of my internet issues but no you're good no you're 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 not freezing nothing okay i want to ask you guys yeah go um, for joseph when uh have you made it out to california to play live so my first tour actually was probably my last time correct yeah so it was our own headliner 2017 we were there then and then Harry couldn't. Harry had to take like off from touring for a little bit to work, 
And we flew out there and did a tour with Alter Beast, Us, Warforged, and Macabre. That sick. was like 12 That's days. Right. That was just West Coast. That's sick. Is it Macabre or Macabre? Macabre. Macabre. It's not, it's not From Macabre, Wisconsin. Right? The, cheese, oh, okay, the okay. cheese band, yeah. <laughs> Is it, are we talking about the same, the old school like murder? No, no, no not, ma- not Macabre. Oh, okay, not okay. Macabre. Macabre. Well, that's how it's spelled, or- so that's. Macabre. M I C A W B E R. I see oh, gotcha, you. Gotcha. I see where Jules at. Do you know? I'm still, do you know Marv? Uh, that could you know be Marv? a, a <laughs> miss. miss Rob's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ain't been there in a while. So, well, no, no, I guess that wasn't too long ago. That was what? When did the pandemic start? 2020. March was probably 2020. A few months Fucking... before it, right? The summer before. Yeah, it was the summer. It was that summer before it. Oh shit! Yeah, I I just wish I've seen you guys, dude. Like I'm bummed. Like I feel. I wish I've seen you. (laughs) I feel like you guys would crush it. Like you guys, I feel like probably crush it live, and I want to witness it. We we had a really good show there. We got to play with. All right, hold on. I think it was consumed by fire, and then it was. (laughs) Archaic, then Archaic, us, that's right. and then Kennedy Vale played after us. Right. We played Sacramento. Was it? Uh, is it Purification by Fire? Is the band, or is there actually also a consumer? No, I fire? think I think that might have been it. The, okay. the, what what, ben, what venue in band. Sacramento? Do you remember? So, was it Starlight? Was Lounge? Starlight. Star, Starlight, which is now Holy yeah. Dever. Yeah, we played yeah. there, and ironically, yeah. the crazy that show thing here, ruled. Cool. Some guy came up, bought a shirt. We didn't realize anything or who he was and one day we see a picture jared dines was there and loved us and bought a shirt and then somebody was like yeah dude jared dines is wearing your shirt in this video i'm like what and they sent it to me They're like apparently he's seen you at some show with like kennedy vale or something like that i guess he was at that show damn You're famous now basically basically that, that was a yeah. really good show <laughs> that awesome. was a really good one one time, Casey wore my uh, band's shirt on a podcast, and I got famous from it. It was super sick. <laughs> As of right now. <laughs> yeah, dude, the, I mean, the out. super Buddhist, you're right in the moment. It happening right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys are going to trip out when you hear Dreamer, uh, Joseph's yeah, that band, shit, Dreamer. That shit's it's definitely going to fucking... Sorry. It's going to it's gonna that. turn some heads for sure. Shout out to Chris. Drop that shit. Christopher Beetle, dude. Hey, hey, Christopher Cali Beetle. Death exclusive. We're about to drop a song. <laughs> How many times about did drop I a fuck song? his no, last name Anthony, up, dude? What? Anthony, you messed up a Cali Death exclusive, dude. Oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just what was it? <laughs> oh, we're about to drop a song. And it features me. So it's the first Dreamer material with me on it. So I'm really Oh, excited. we're doing it now? Nice. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I know. That's yep. big. Yeah. Oh, fuck like yeah, right I'm now you're, you're pulling it up? No, not that. You want to play it live right oh, now? Not like that now. Oh, that would be so sick. I could. Oh, dude. No, we'll get crazy. Dude, hold right. your phone Joel up to the microphone. Joel built that shit up. <laughs> Joel built that shit I mean, up. About dude. as in like like in a what? week we're going to drop a song. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. dude, just I hold your shirt. phone up to the microphone now, just like you would at a show. Like, yo, check out my band. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I don't really want to uh, hear this. <laughs> well, I guess I wore the right shirt then. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I... uh I got a mad, you know, shout out to, we added a new member uh, this month, Ricky, oh, sh- shout oh, out to Ricky yeah. on bass. I actually, Ricky's like, I've been nice. listening to Cali death podcast. And I'm like, damn right. You nice. are, you, you're in a band <laughs> with me. You listen to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a requirement. I got a, I got a quick, I got a quick snippet of it real quick. Right. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the no professor. one's ever heard it, dude. It's fire. Yeah. The, pr- the 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 professor gives all of his bandmates homework. <laughs> that works. Yeah, I'm like, you know, he'll tell me something. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, actually, uh, Flo told us that on episode 16. I heard it firsthand or whatever. Yeah, you get the inside scoop. Episode 16. That's I don't know, dude. Back. I don't know. I don't know when yeah. Flo was on. When was Flo on? When was the cryptopsy episode? I don't even That's know. Yeah, question, when was dude. that? I need yeah. to know. You guys don't understand. Let's do that. Let's figure it <laughs> out. Oh yeah, right no, now. we do. So we got a, we got a full podcast with them, and we had Mike DeSalvo also there too. It was like with with fucking the singer currently, and then fucking Mike. Yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt. That guy yeah. ruled. Sorry, guys. Internet is so sick. Right Salvo now. just chimed. It was awesome. Oh. Joel, you're Thick killing. Joel, I was like five seconds ago. 
Like, I wasn't even. I mean, here, I guess I can call the internet down. company. I don't know the fuck. <laughs> Yeah, Joel's oh, definitely no. either then no, or now. I can't tell. Like, he's time traveling all over. I mean, you're the <laughs> IT guy, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny to say, call the internet. I'll, I'll make a better company. internet. I'll just I'll create a better internet. Yeah, this exactly. Is going Who's going to call the internet company, dude? <laughs> you're like, right. It's an emergency. I'm doing a podcast. Question, <laughs> Episode 24. Wait, wait Joe's That's got his hand. I was looking up. Question, oh, okay. question for Cognitive. 34. How do you guys put out so much music so fast? Is it fast? Do you think yeah, I was going to say, is it that fast? I mean, you have four, uh, you have a lot four, faster than Odious. Four full length albums <laughs> well, since yeah. 2014, oh, well, right? I, mean, come I, on. It's I been don't like know. Years. It's like Just every two years. Joking. It's like a, every two consistent. year album cycle. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So I feel you, like we kind of hold ourselves to that, that standard, like whether it be intentionally or not, whether it's because of the record label or not. But I think that's like the industry standard which fucking sucks but like we write an album and rob said before maybe not tonight maybe it was on another interview but it's as soon as we get done like he goes on a riff spree i go on a riff spree we already have like ideas brewing so like as soon as the album's done like the work's not done like we're we're already kind of like shooting ideas around yeah like we're like but by the time the album yeah, as soon as the album's done, like we're tired of it. We've listened to it a million times, and we're like, "Well, now I want to one-up that." Like I'm done with that. Well, you guys are listening to this. Like I'm already doing something and, else. And it helps to do it that you know way I mean? too, because of how much we tour. Like it's hard to do that on the road. So like yeah. it's like, hey, yeah. if we're home, let's get it done now, so that when it's time to go out and play, we don't have to worry about it in a way. Yeah. At least they have like something in the tank, just an idea to work off of or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's as I mean, an artist, it's it's kinda strange because you're working ahead of like let's let's say you're an artist like you guys who have a fan base or us or whoever. You're actually working past like what's already been right. happening, you know? It's like if if you're keeping up with the with your your fans and all that stuff you've made it but by the time it latches on with people you're already on to the next thing and i know that like the projects that i've been in don't move that fast but at the same time that's how an artist's mind works like by the time it's ready to put out you're already bored with it and want to do another thing well, I think I think part of the reason too, like like you know the industry standard, like Harry was saying, but like part of that is like people's attention spans too. Like by the time you're like, oh, I really like this band, there's already six other sick bands being put out in front of them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So like, you you got to be relevant and you got to be on top of stuff. I feel like. Well, you guys are never the industry standard, but I feel like the industry standard has changed and slowed down a bit. I'm thinking about like Zenith Passage is coming out with their song. Man, I hope so. Which yes. is new. Yeah. And it's their first song in like five years. And I feel like, and the new Arch Spire, right? That's their first song in five or six years. And I feel like the... the No, no. Arch Spires, that's like three, that's three years. That's three years, maybe. Yeah. And okay. that, in my opinion, might have been because of COVID. But I think, yeah, I think the gap can definitely widen because you have more access to things. In any I case, think you, you're yeah. very right on that. I also yeah. think the size of the band matters. Meshuggah can put a record out every four or five years. You know yeah. what I mean? Cannibal Courts or Tool, 13, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Odious Mortem, 13. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the next one, though. We're, we're, we made a pact that that won't happen again. But I just, sorry, yeah. Go for it, Joseph, real quick. Last yeah. point on this is just, I just went to review right. your guys' music before like having you guys on. And I was like, fuck, I, I can't listen to this entire discography before the episode. There's just too much, too Lucky many albums you. in between Lucky when I first you. heard of you guys. And when, <laughs> when I know, right? I, for all I know, your middle albums suck, dude. But uh, <laughs> the ones I checked out were really sick. So, <laughs> What's your favorite? What was your favorite from what you got to check out? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I actually know that <laughs> I remember Armin's video, the, the playthrough video that Armin put out was sick as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so. awesome. Yeah, I remember that. So I remember following so you guys. What was that? Through the Omnicide? Was that Omnicide? 
Yeah. Birthing the deformity yeah. was the one I was thinking. Oh, about. he did birthing. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You did do that. Yeah. yeah. Anthony, what were you on him? I was just going to go on with the singles and the albums thing. It's like, it really isn't much different than it what used to be because they used to put out the physical singles with two or three songs from the album. And then you'd have to wait for the actual album to drop. It's the same thing just digitally. And actually you're like saving money now. Cause if you want to pre-order shit, you get those singles in advance and, uh, now it's like out of this is all out of context. Now you guys moved on from it. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't well, are you say are you saying like when you release no, album, the, like I was, yeah, back you were, in the day, we you actually about, have to front the money to like print those for people before they. Even well, and he was saying as a fan, you had to buy the single too. Like, yeah, you had to like, buy oh, the single. Oh, yeah, that's right, what it right, was. Yeah, like yeah. now, it digitally yeah, we get it. it kind of just fed <laughs> to us through YouTube and all that shit. Yeah. It was. It was what I was trying to say was on the foot of before what Joseph said. So, yeah, I thought the singles would get like sent to the radio stations. Did people really buy the singles at the record? Oh, store? Yeah. I did. I did for sure. Like as a, as a record. Yeah. As a, what a seven inch, the like seven single, inch thing? not like every yeah. album that I bought, but there was definitely singles that I bought. They were, and, and for our age group, they were like, did they were in the small cardboard sleeve CDs and you would be like, Oh, it's got the one or two oh, yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like uh the radio edit, the unedited, the instrumental, and the remix. It was like a four track, almost like an EP deal, all mixed around of like one, one song. song, you know. No, yeah. I rem- I remember that. I-, I definitely had some third eye blind. <laughs> third eye blind. Or no, Joel's uh resetting. Jill's coming back soon. I'm sure. I'm not sure. He's coming back saying. from the yeah, future. Just keep going. It's cool. He's sure. coming back. <laughs> yeah. the future. Third eye blind, you said? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you want to talk about that? <laughs> That's some Cali yeah, shit right there. Dude. Yeah, keep on going, dude. <laughs> Yo, I taught a student. Uh, what's that song? Third eye, uh, Semi-Charmed Life. Huge oh. mistake because I was like, I thought it'd be like a 20 minute guitar lesson. And then it took like multiple lessons to teach this song and i like couldn't fucking hear those chords by the end of it. Oh, no. <laughs> i was like she's like I th- i've been working on it i'm like don't worry about that song this is please. gonna be <laughs> so easy and you're like damn it if i have to hear this song one more time guys, exactly. <laughs> i was like i'm not yeah. listening to you guys anyway i'm not listening when you say <laughs> oh hit the high one hit the high one oh how you guys feel about candle box i mean dude i'm from the 90s dude yeah so hell yeah like, they probably got a song that i could do <laughs> to dude you could you know you I, like, could I, like how to that. Like, I like how like everyone tried to play off not like a candle box and he comes in i'm from the 90s dude. everyone so everyone loves sick. candle box i think everyone loves dude, candle box. i mean People just don't realize it until they throw it on. I'm never super heard it. into, I'm oh, into nostalgia for sure, dude. So if you could now. hit that button for me, even if it's a uh, fucking popular song, whatever, dude. Yeah, it, 90s. It's at the right time, dude. I like, to, I like to geek out on nostalgia at times. Uh, not all day, but. It's not even a nostalgia windows. thing. It's just good. It's yeah, good. It definitely. It, it hits. <laughs> There's a reason why so many people like it, right? Mm. It hits a fair. fucking nerve on so many different people, you know? And is Joel, is Joel okay? I don't know. <laughs> we probably lost him for good. It's just he's if we're getting the go uh, ahead. We're supposed he, to pretend he's like probably he on the phone with the internet. No, he never left. Like, I don't even <laughs> no, know. Who dude, you're that's talking how Cali does it, dude. We give you the fourth wall, break the fourth this? wall down. Dude. <laughs> Casey, you tell me who this person is. <laughs> Joel's gone, dude. All right. Well, all right. The 90s. Uh, yeah, the 90s <laughs> were, were okay. the ni- so Joseph, what's up with you and uh, being younger than me in the 90s? Like, how do you connect differently to that era? To the 90s? Um, okay. So I remember being given a Backstreet Boys CD because. Banger. That was what kids were supposed to listen to my age. And then so how old were you when you got that CD? I was probably it was 97 ish. So I was probably nine, like seven years old. 
Uh, and I didn't listen to it because so I was you, already wait, hardcore. Wait. You were born in ninety. Yeah, that's crazy. But I'll tell Nine you the first, hurt. the first like like popular artist I remember like kids on the playground listening to was Eminem. Absolutely, really? yeah. Eminem was. You're the same so age big. as me. Yeah, so we're, I'm well, turning thirty one next week. Actually. All right. Well, you're relatively the same age as me. Yeah. I'll be I'll be thirty three in February, but I was born in eighty nine, so. It's okay. kind of the same. Yeah. Yeah. I remember all those things very visibly. But it's just like, <laughs> it's crazy for you guys because the internet was already there. Yeah. So you know? a lot of the first uh, getting exposed not to first, music for me, yeah. a lot. No, dude, for me, it was LimeWire and, and, and uh, Kazaa and downloading shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, the LimeWire, Kazaa, Morpheus was another one. Oh, I don't know if you remember uh, that one. I haven't heard that in a while. It's yeah. funny because, like, returning. Remember Soulseek? Like, Soulseek was the shit. Almost. Where you could just steal albums from other people's computer if you both had the program. Soulseek. I don't think best. I used it. I wish it was still it's around. A, it's to like be honest. generic enough of a sounding thing that I might have heard of it before, but I might See, not. For me, Soulseek. like when I was in the 90s, I was in my mom's car swinging my feet, listening to like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden. Mm-hmm. Like that oh, was, yeah, what was yeah. on the radio at the time. And like <laughs> that was like. Pearl Jam was on the radio, STP and stuff like yeah, that. Like, all that was around too. Yeah. So no, nah, yeah, but that Pearl was like Jam when singing all the bells. That was when it first came out. Was on the radio at that time. You like you'd be in there like, oh my god, REM's about to drop a new song today at twelve. Oh my god, like. Uh, nice. And do you remember sitting to there with the radio and your fucking cassette player yeah, and press and play and record just to record that song off the radio to dude, have that totally song. making mixtapes on cassette that dude. was so important and it dude, was like i used to do that shit all the time i remember when cds came out Amazing. i'd be like i'm gonna get one one day and like that was like a big moment and it's funny me, i still it was, collect cds it was burning cds was before that, that was the first time we did any of that we didn't put cds on the i actually had I, one I cassette one cassette with aldi miola on it and a, it's like oh, wow. a mixtape someone made with aldi miola that that was huge for me that i had in my car but that was it it was all burned cds most of the time yeah making my mix first tapes for your lady That's joel the your uh, internet's dude i used to sick, dude. i used to make mixtapes right all the time from the radio dude, all the time uh, cdrs good. made that shit a lot easier Make yeah. a mix oh, yeah. for your lady. Oh, yeah, you get to You like... know what else made it really easy to do? Book mm. shows and tours and all. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Rob, My you first cassette was Skid Row's fucking self-titled. Oh, yeah. I, I think came out the year that I was born. My dad was like, here, take this. I don't want to listen to this anymore. I was like, oh, oh Rob, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, Ride the Lightning. So I was born the day that came out. July 27th, 1984. Dude, that was three years ago. You're a legend. Dude, th- th- we had that conversation about three years ago. Your internet no, just No, but I didn't... <laughs> but you were talking, <laughs> we were talking about... Didn't we debunk he that just said, he, he said... No, he, no, no, that was... Uh, uh, that was another one. Injustice for All. Oh, okay. I, no, so he said no, though. So Harry said that he was born right around Skid Row. I just said I was born the day that On your favorite day, yeah. fucking album came out. The day yeah. that that album was released, I was coming out of a birth canal. Wow. You were riding the lightning. Taking the slide. (laughs) (laughs) The (laughs) slightning. You were reverse fading to black. Sorry, that's super. Rob's just (laughs) praying that he didn't hear that. (laughs) You were were escaping. Totally, dude. That's all I got. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing, dude. Uh, I don't even know where we were. Yeah, I don't know. You Let's guys are guys Zelda with the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so I play Zelda once every 10 years, Ocarina of Time, and then Skyward Sword 10 years later, and then Breath of the Wild 10 years later. I always, like, skip one of the games. But those times Breath I play Breath of the Wild is the best, dude. Dude, it's like, every time it's, like, checking in with myself, like, going into, like, hardcore Wait, wait, wait. Nostalgia. You didn't play Wind Waker? No. Oh, mm. that's a really good one. Breath don't let him Wild bully you. It's crazy. Right don't let him do it. I wasn't. You end up with real estate. <laughs> my ground there. You end up with a house. You end up with stay in your ground, dude. Place to fucking store your weapons and shit like that in your own house. In Wind Waker? 
No, in Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah, in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Have you got your own house yet? Yeah, dude. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. I how, don't. I don't even how, have the boomerang yet. How far are you, Rob? Uh, I hours? just beat my first. I literally just beat my first uh, great beast or whatever they're called. Divine beast. Yeah, I just beat my first one. And, Which one uh, was it? Because you can pick. Yeah, I it? did the elephant. Oh, sick. The watery one. The water yeah, I level. did that yeah. one. Dude, game's hard, man. But you know, I'm getting the hang so of it. So the divine like, beast is a like a moving structure, right? That you. Yeah, it's like a moving right. dungeon. Yeah, yeah. Yep, dude. Watching my nine-year-old fucking kill that game, dude. Hell He's yeah. already done master mode, all that shit. The upgrades that he hits up me for, like, oh, I need ten more dollars to fucking do this. Okay, <laughs> dude. Go fucking do the dishes and pick out the garbage. <laughs> but you want them to have it so bad. So you're like, yeah, I do. I do. In my mind, I'm like, oh, dude, you're getting this, dude. You're getting you this, get dude, But you got you to do some shit around here first. Well, you got to earn it. But like, yeah. I want you to have this. Yeah, I'm not going to just throw 10 bucks at your shit, dude. You got you to gotta show me you want that $10, dude. That's pretty sick. In my day, it was Pokemon cards, like the physical. So I would like oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. chores and go get a pack of Pokemon cards. Same, same, same. Hell yeah. Hell and yeah. I always got the worst ones, dude. I had like 40 Weedles. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when your special card in the pack would be like some like like action card? It wasn't like a an actual. Pokemon. Yeah, it wasn't even a fucking card that you could yeah. fuck with. Like nobody yeah. cared. Yeah. I'm like, all, you just wanted the, the Pokemon. You didn't want the yeah, back. Exactly. back. You didn't want I think, in the I back. think the biggest flex I had was like a Gyarados or like what what, what was the uh Blastoise? Uh Blast Blastoise. Blastoise yeah, I had hard. Blastoise and I had Yeah, that was one of the big three. But I had a I had those a were my two flexes. Back. Everyone else was like, yo, I got the uh, uh, <laughs> like they had the binder they had they had the whole you know the clipboard <laughs> Harry looks or so what? right now what's Harry that looks, they had the motherfucking binder dude he had to smoke with them no we were talking about it earlier we had you go we to had the like tournaments? the class oh no, go, no, no i went to some tournaments at uh no 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 Toys i never i never played seriously yo shout mm, out hell to- no Furniture Dome, homies. I went across the street from your house <laughs> to the Toys R Us. Over is that Toys R Us or that, that was? Yeah, I played what? Pokemon. Yeah, did you kill, dude? I got I got jacked, bro. One one time, <laughs> someone fucking. I was playing. This is dude. This is when I lost faith. Um, I was playing a game and against some kid, and his friend went through my cards and stole all my holographic cards out what? while I was playing. This That's game. fucked up, dude. Yeah. yeah. You got to keep that close yeah, to the vest. I know, dude. That, that no was, wonder you lost. <laughs> that was literally <laughs> what. That's what I'm saying. It, it, that's what shattered everything oh, about up. me, dude. That's when I like became a lot a dark. of human suck, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking. If terrible. you had them to this day, that would be like owning one but Bitcoin. Can you imagine being like a year <laughs> older than I was then and just being like, let's go to the Pokemon tournament and steal the holographic cards off the younger kids? Yeah, dude. they don't know. Yeah, they don't. That's... They're like young and innocent, dude. Nothing uh, you can do. Now, you should do, you should do that. You should do that now and get your cards back. <laughs> <laughs> find him like like we're like in our 30s. I find this guy and just <laughs> steal his cards back. <laughs> Sorry, go to the, go to the tournament. He's still playing. <laughs> Damn. Uh, oh, did you guys play Magic at all? No, no. I just that's started a playing horrible my, answer. But started playing my nephew's Magic. Nice. Uh, yeah, Mul- it's a it's a multi generational thing because I didn't play it when I was a kid, but now I'm having my nephews teach me how to play it, which is really fun. So I played it when I was a kid, and okay. funny enough, two guys on my work crew actually went out and got like starter decks and like did the whole thing. I was like, man, that's like really interesting. They're like, yeah, we were like searching all these fucking stores. Like no one had a starter deck. They're all sold out. Like apparently everyone's just buying them up. But I feel like I enjoyed every, it when I was younger. But. Every time I like Google, like I'm like, that's like a, I hear about something. I'm like, or think of something like that could be a sick band name or like lyric. And it's always like the oh, name yeah. of a magic card. Already magic card or something. for sure. They've got like fucking yeah. every cool term. Like it's already yeah. a card. So props to those dudes invented that world 
I dude, I just I play video games and and it's music for me pretty much. Like I, I'm like super into video games, so that that is my magic and, and Pokemon and all that stuff. Like, do you play? Uh, just, do you play Ultimate Smash Ultimate on Switch yet? Of course. Yo. He you know actually got doing? mad that no one wanted to play Smash with him last week, <laughs> so he played Zelda on a Switch by himself while they played Mario Party. Let's, let's I'm I'm an it. avid anti Smash Brothers person. Anti Smash. Let you guys know. Yo, I'm, I'm right there with you because that fucking game. Every time I fucking off, play dude. it, I'm probably gonna be like uh, freezing in a second. But that mm-hmm. fucking game, like every time I play it, I'm just like I just do, like I don't know. It seems like there's not like a technical skill to it. It's just like some sort of a luck kind of fucking it's thing. It's different, dude. It's different from your Street Fighter and Mortal yeah, Kombat. Yeah, because you're pressing mind. buttons and they're not doing the buttons that you're pressing. And you're no, like, God just damn it. You're not fucking puss- pressing right. them at the right time, dude. Yeah, no, dude, right. not, if you play with like the real dudes in that shit, dude, like oh, dude, they have fucked. that shit like so yeah. down. It's all about getting, not getting knocked out. It's like a you got you got a boundary. Don't get knocked out of the boundary. Well, you're, and you're, another you're, thing, because you can fuck people around, up. You can thing. fuck somebody up the whole time. You're yeah. But if they knock you out once, they and can you have don't like, knock them out at all. It doesn't matter what you did. You're done. I got into argument about this before. You could be like four hundred percent damage. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah, it doesn't mean like anything. you could just be beating the shit out of someone and they're it's, just it's still sumo there. Sumo wrestling. That's what it is. It's sumo <laughs> wrestling applied to a game. video game. I love that game. I, love I know so many. I love it too. Everyone loves that oh, game. Dude, no. Everyone loves that game. That's what I'm saying. Trevor fucks me up, bro. <laughs> Trevor fucks me up. That's what I'm saying. What, what do you guys think about you guys play uh, fans of Mass Effect at all? What the fuck is that? No, that's an older game. Yeah. Isn't it? Mass Effect? No, no Mass, Mass Effect's like a newer one. I've seen, I've no, seen the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. advertising for it. Yeah, they have yeah. a newer. Is it on like no. PS3 or no? The one on one is Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and Super Smash Brothers. This is the Dude, other. I, I mean, don't don't Tekken. don't love Tekken. don't want Mortal Kombat and fucking Street Fighter with Super Smash Brothers. It's Those the same com- shit, bro. It's not the same shit. No, it's not no, the no, same. I, I agree with you. It, no. it starts. <laughs> you can't the same let well, it starts awesome. the same shit. No, no, it's they're actually awesome. three different, totally different things. To, okay, then tell me how it's different. Well, I mean, Super Smash Brothers is just like fictional, the like Nintendo characters, gone. just like laying eggs and like hitting people with hammers. No, no, the, you guys are talking then about guys, the shit then... that comes along the way. But what does it start as? <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, 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 but if you press zones, a... it's a fighting game. I'll, but if I'll you give press you a button, the in... time, okay, the, the environments play such a different like a factor in yeah, everything. Yeah, you know, right? Stop! Come on. The, the levels are like it's a one-on-one like, battle no. game that no. is not one-on-one. Not no, one-on-one. I, There's I a difference like it, with Smash. I feel like Interrupt Fest is like way sicker than. No, <laughs> when you're saying with the bonuses that give you a, actual like backup, is that what you're saying? Oh well, Super Smash against me and my son. Yes, Smash, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about me versus one other human. That's oh, well, it's, yeah, it's just one on one combat. I feel like it could yeah. just be crazy, right but now and you want to play. <laughs> I think we should do this. I think we should do this. Post Pod Super Smash Brothers tournament. Oh, God. Count me out. Let's, Fuck that let's, hang, <laughs> let's hang up and play fucking Smash. I'm, I'm in, dude. <laughs> I'm in. I don't want to smash any of my brothers. So I'll be there. <laughs> what about Mario Kart? You guys, Mario Kart? Hell fans? yeah, dude. Yo, Hell yeah. Mario yeah. Kart. That's, dude. that's a game. See, that's, that's a, a game. game. That's a game that's we a game. can all. That's a, that's a real game. Exactly. That's a real game. <laughs> that should be an Olympic sport. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real Honestly, game. Honestly, it probably, it probably could be. Smash Brothers just kind of got this weird cult following that I, it, and now it's like super cool now. And I'm like, the game has never been cool. It's, it's never always been, been fucking have fun cool. Playing Shut it, dude. up. It's Smash Brothers cool. is talking about. Smash no, Brothers no, no, no. Cool? No, no. It's I'm always been cool. Smash but Brothers. No. It, it seems like this like underground, like cool game that you need to get into and you play it and you're just like, really? This is the game? I think this it's cool. Game it's always, it's always been my fun. my nine year old up. I'm but stoked, dude. What I'm talking about Mario Kart. Oh yeah, Mario especially, Kart. Mario Kart's oh, yeah. Especially a Mario Kart 64. Like, if you don't oh, yeah. fuck with that, dude, that's like, a fucking game. The, I right played there. the Super here. Nintendo version yeah. with uh, my son because he got like a little that pack one's good on, too. The, on the Switch that plays all the 
Super. It, it, oh dude, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the one where you go way twenty dollars a like, year, and you just get I all used to play the this one. Games. Oh so, yeah, so, that's the that's the one. But Sonic dude, Racing is better. Either way, dude, I'm Sonic just saying. Yeah, like, just I'm better than Smash Brothers. Brothers. When you're playing it, you get taken better back to your fucking. Oh yeah, making a hard line, real, dude. Dude, I was playing Donkey Kong Country when I first got that shit. Yeah, I was like, dude, dude, I don't even want to get like Switch games. Like, I just want to play Donkey yeah. Kong. I want to play like, yeah, dude. I was, I was in it. it did was you guys great. have a Genesis back in the day? Yep, I did. Yeah. Did you guys ever play that game Flashback? That's like my favorite. Old Flashback game. and Out and what was the other one? Outworld or Outrun? They were yeah, the yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. With the with the leech, the, the I didn't fucking have that. thing that like would sta- Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Those are my games that I w- like. We're all about back in the day. Those were the fucking amazing. So I think back- the same company made Prince of Persia because it was very momentum based when you would run yep. and all that stuff. Definitely, the original definitely. Prince of Persia. Back in the day, you used to be able to rent a Sega Genesis, dude. Oh, dude, rent it. Yeah. I remember oh, that shit. Guys, my mom I think I caught the tail one, end of that. Dude. Here's, rented I one that. i remember renting a sonic yeah. sonic the hedgehog <laughs> <laughs> fucking uh the <laughs> michael the jackson like game and <laughs> do you remember how hard the fucking aladdin, lion king game was aladdin disney is aladdin dude all three of those games that one was hard too week, dude. do you guys remember being younger and going into rent video games remember? and it was like and it would take it would take like a lot of time because you're like i gotta make this worth it Oh yeah! Oh, definitely. Like you were like, dude, like my mom's giving me five dollars oh, yeah. to rent exactly. something like this shit, and I only got four days. I got to get the fucking banging game. And that was like going to. That was like going to Blockbuster, dude. That's the I same thing. It's like, yo, what we fucking did. movie, dude? Like, this is it, dude. Yeah, but, but you're, you're, then you're, not only would you rent a game, but the but game, like, the game was a bigger one though. You For would sure. go to rent a game and you had what you wanted and then it wouldn't be there and you'd be like, all right, well, I'll get this one. Then that wasn't there and that's when it got serious. And you were like, now I got to get a game that like might not be good. Mm-hmm. And that took real thought. Yeah. 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 Did, and exactly. they used to con you with some cool ass covers too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were good, man. They were good. <laughs> oh, yeah. The They'd be like, yeah, there's this ninja fighting a dragon on the front and then you'd get it and it was like, rolling watermelons around and you're like this is not what i wanted to do like, I, I, I wanted to be the ninja fighting the dragon why am i rolling watermelons around like, like dude they would have like shit like tetris it would be like yoshi's cookie but it wouldn't be yoshi's cookie it'd be something like that and on the front oh, it'd be like dude, that game rolled, shoot dude. lasers and you'd be like that's what i want to do and then it was like some puzzle game and you're like oh, i didn't want to oh, do this man. getting the puzzle game when you see the sick cover you're all stoked on it like you're oh, some it's action worse. adventure it's game worse. and then it's like then it's like fucking like a, a basic puzzle game and you're like oh my I, this was my choice this is i have to live with this for four yeah, days you're so, like nine you're not like like 30 like yeah dude i'm gonna chill and try and maybe it's gonna get better life. maybe it's gonna get better and it never did <laughs> no. i had so many games like that especially like no. being first, unless it was grade. tetris that was that yeah. was it that was the well, only just like because i used to do that with a blockbuster with like nintendo games you know what i mean like You'd see the cover of it and be like, you know, what the fuck? This looks sick as fuck. And it'd just be like some like, oh, it's like a dig dug, like simplified. You know, it's like a yeah. super like oh, basic. Oh, that was so bad. You got and you're like, dude, I wanted to play Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ninja exactly. Gaiden. If you had to pick dude. one. Yeah. You had to like, pick I wanted one. to play Castlevania. Like, I didn't want Dig yeah. Dug. <laughs> I think, I think pick, uh, Casey pick just one was about game to ask what? a question. I think he he's about to ask a question. I think he just he just Rob just nailed it without even knowing. But yeah. Castlevania is probably like probably the sickest oh, Nintendo yeah. game, right? Rob's Rob's on Castlevania. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? The first yeah, what's, what's, cool. the best? like ori- original Nintendo? Yeah, original sorry. Nintendo. No, Super, Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Oh, Super Nintendo. Nintendo. Super okay. Nintendo? I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go with the OG, the boring one. Super Mario World. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah, it's a great game. It's on the top five yeah, for yeah. me. For That's sure. my favorite, for dude. Sure. I can't yeah. even I can't even go beyond that. I got it, no, that sure. or Turtles in Time, dude. Oh, that was a yeah. fucking Turtles great yeah. one too, dude. dude. For sure. Yo, dude. No. You Mega know Man. it's a good game. <laughs> Mega Man, Man X. X. Mega Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was good too. All the Mega on, on Nintendo One, I mean, Mega Man was the sickest, actually, now that I could think about it. That's that was like the Mega one Man I two. Get. Mega two. Man two. Two. Oh, yeah. Totally. Like Metal Man. Exactly. Dude, there's yeah, a, sure. a lot of bands that have covered like a lot of those songs and stuff off that, and they've made really cool like metal, like the Dr. Yeah. Wiley's Castle, like like very cool like versions of it. You know what I mean? Like that so actually we've got friends from you know the area funny? in a band called X Hunters. 
and they it's do boys, metal bro. covers like that. Nice. And they when they put their CD out, I think Harry can tell me if I'm right. One of the guys used to work at a blockbuster and he had like all their leftover games. So he like got the video game cartridge made of their album art saying X Hunters, and then inside it comes with like a, a blank no. game with your Super Nintendo. He Yeah, he did all that himself. He's like a crazy fucking artist. He's actually making his own video game now called like Trash Man or something like that. Or <laughs> Trash Pale Man, something like it's it's crazy. Nice. But yeah, dude, like you get they, a game like game. I, I went to high school with these dudes and they're just like, We really like all this music, like from that era, especially mm-hmm. especially uh Rock Man. Rock Man. Nice. Uh, Mega Man, but they yeah. then they branched out and they're like, well, we're gonna do Donkey Kong, we're gonna do Final Fantasy, like all this yeah, shit. Yeah. So they and they, I don't know if you guys have heard of Magfest or any of that. It's a video mm-hmm. game convention. They have like video game bands play. So they did that a couple years. Nice. But like they recorded a couple albums and I did like a couple guest solos with them. Oh yeah. But like they were just okay. dudes that like I was in homeroom with like whatever mm-hmm. and i was just playing other bands were like oh you're you're sick like do you want to do this thing I'm like all right cool but like they really did like a truly good job of like some classic songs it's that, like that band uh, if you want to check it out x hunters power glove fucking power glove yeah 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 oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Them. Them. Like, that was the last the same, same, same thing same okay. thing yeah yeah well my favorite game yeah. of all time is super metroid so there you go. Okay. Yeah. 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 You can't fuck I've, with that. So I've hard. played that game so many times from the beginning to end. I so believe question they... for you, since you're a Metroid fan, did you play Demon's Crest? No. You need to play that because cool. it's like Metroid, but it's like it's Capcom, and it's like Metroid. You know, you can backtrack. You know, different areas and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. Like metal ass soundtrack. You're the devil guy that you that was in Ghosts and Goblins. Oh, sick. Okay. Yeah. It's really good. Nice. Fuck yeah, K- Cali Game Fest or uh, podcast, fucking getting <laughs> off to a hot start, dog. Uh, <laughs> we already talked so, about crypto. So, anyways, <laughs> back to the puppets, and uh, yeah. we're actually, at? you know what? I have a question for you guys because you guys are guitar players. So, um, we are. Are you there? <laughs> okay, I was like, shit. I don't know. Playing the new album I'm right drunk. now. Like, shit, um, I'm no, no, no. The drummer. No, no. So, uh, so what kind of amp? Like, what's your favorite amp head? Because I know a lot of people ask for fucking gear and the, like questions and shit. Like, not that what I mean. What are you guys playing? And what what do you want? If you don't, if you're not happy with what you're playing, what kind of amp do you go want, ahead, Rob? Because I have a litany of things. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely I I have a PV Triple X, and I love it. <laughs> nice. Uh, I I I do. I fucking love it, and I'm trying to find the name of this ampeg head that i love too the solid state the vh 140c you know it's a dying fetus old school yeah yeah i i was looking at one the other day honestly i found one because they don't make them anymore and they're hard to find yep and uh i've been thinking about grabbing it but yeah i i love my pv triple x and then yeah what was that that, that you're trying to grab sorry it's the ampeg vh 140c it's what oh the, yeah yeah the, the dying fetus that, yeah. Yep. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's, they're it's sick, man. I think that them things I know are they're sick. Yeah. Are you a fan, Joel? So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's like uh actually speaking <sighs> of uh like uh, animosity and stuff, uh like animosity, they were going to record Empires with Zach, and um they were just you know they're humongous dying fetus fans, so they basically were like Zach was like, No, we're not gonna use that fucking head like to record in a live uh, in a recording environment. We're not using a solid state fucking ampeg. And uh they're like, Yeah, we are. Like we're we're using that. That's like dying. What's dying fetus uses? I think even Suffo used it for a while. Like it's like it's like one of the more like iconic like heavy solid state yeah. amps. It's and uh, heavy man, it's fucking it was. heavy. Totally. And, so, and dying fetus well, used it until the. I mean, they finally actually. We might have been on tour with them when they finally went to Ingle or something like that. But they were still cranking that VH one forty Z like old school amp. That was so like. Correct. Go ahead. Harry, go. Sorry, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just got excited because I talked to Blue from Dysentery. Mm-hmm. Shout and out, Blue. Blue from a, yeah, a, 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 Blue. a guttural Pete. secrete. 
No, blue from Fit for an Autopsy and Dis. Oh, got gotcha. you. Oh, blue. I know blue. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Sextrum- I'm Sextrum- sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I know. Yeah. Blue. yeah. I'm. I'm sorry. I interrupted. I'm getting excited. God damn it. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm. I'm sorry. Now. Now I feel bad. Uh, <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, go ahead. Because you were talking about something that was like super interesting. And no, this no, no, is no, probably no, no. not I going to be. Hear, I hear, but no, I was I talking. Know. I was. I was talking about blue, and yeah, blue's awesome. or talking to blue about because when he plays with dysentery, which I haven't seen him do in a while, and I would love to see that again. But I believe he had a Mesa dual rectifier, and he had that Ampeg that you he were did. speaking of. So, and I asked him why he did that, and he was like, "Well, when I do it on one side, you're getting this beefy." heavy tone and then on that you're getting this solid state like consistent tone and the yeah, mix like mid-range. you're getting all frequencies you're getting everything anything that mace is missing the solid state is making up for anything the solid state is missing that is making up for so every time i saw them they just sounded like a sledgehammer and i couldn't figure out why yeah and when i finally like approached him about it he's like oh i have so much shit going through this in front of this and and yeah what are you, what, what, what are you, harry what do you use like you use live what do you use uh for the past tour or two that i've done i was using a triple x as well but mm-hmm. usually i use a 5152 nice um and i have a uh maxon 808 the uh, clean boost thing yeah uh, yeah. In front, of course, which, whatever, that's that's what you want. That's dude. That's the the hidden, honestly. It's like, just it's, it's a hidden it trick. Is what it is. It's a hidden trick, though, that a lot of people. Yeah, don't, but like, everyone well, knocks it. Like everyone wants something no, more. No one but, knocks like, it. It's, that, no one not. Who the fuck knocks it? Like, uh, nowadays, you know, people do. Like, like, oh, you don't play a Kemper. You don't no, play no, no, an you Axe Effects. Like, no, 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 no. That's not. not no, I mean, no. All the people that play Kemper and Axe Effects, like myself, dude. No, Harry. Like Classic. everyone that plays camping, and I and want, Effects, I want those. I want those. Yeah, but everyone that pl- plays I want those, those things, you don't want those. I mean, you want those if you don't want to. If you want to like not carry stuff around, you want those. But if you want like the actual like two, but I know tone, what I'm gonna do. I know yeah. what I'm gonna do all night. Well, what I'm like, saying is like I'm gonna everyone, set it and forget it. What I'm saying is like everyone wants the fucking tube tone, and that's why they have an Axe Effects or Kemper. It's because they have the matching thing that matches those those a- amps it's not like the right. actual amp sounds yeah. better than than an axe effects or camper that's just it's true but yeah. um if you want to fucking put your fucking rig in a goddamn briefcase and walk out then that's the best way to do it that's just right. by far the best way to do it but if, like you're not going to sound as good as a a full tube amp or a 5153 or a or a ingle or a a fucking what a fit, the classic fifty one fifty sound. You're not gonna get that from an Axe Effects. You'll get close to it, but you're not gonna get like the actual tone. You no, know this I mean? sounds better than right. an HM two through a triple X, brother. Yo, so <laughs> so here's my big here's my biggest regret. But I agree. Like I'm so hesitant to do it because I really do want a Kemper. I want to get one. Oh, you want one? But you're like, just making fun of people. Oh, that had no, no, no. I want one. Like I really do. <laughs> but I want a powered one. I want a powered Kemper. Okay. Uh, Anthony, open your eyes. Anthony, no, he's sleeping. He's just like, man, he's putting me to sleep with this Kemper I'm shit. Not. I'm watching you guys the I'm whole out. fucking time. How are you dude? watching? Oh, uh, he? He's high? watching I, Harry interrupt. I, I see Rob Flynn. <laughs> I see Rob Flynn. I see Brian Posehn. I see everybody. Dude. <laughs> stop! Stop! Don't call he's me. Watching that. Harry interrupt everyone very carefully. He's like, I'm, watch I'm sorry, <laughs> Rob. Stop! I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I love it. So biggest regret, my my my, I used to own a uh, a Mesa Boogie Revision F Blackface dual okay. rectifier, like, mm-hmm. dude, that shit with my Max on in front of it was devastating, like, awesome. But when yeah. I went and started playing with Cognitive, that's when I got when I got rid of it. Okay. Uh, because it didn't fit the band necessarily. But maybe that yeah. was just my fault not EQing it, but now I miss it so much. Totally. But that that or my dream amp is a Soldano Super Lead. Oh yeah. So the or SLO or, or a VHS Pipple. The Pipple, yeah, yeah. So the SLO yeah. one hundred, I remember 
when I went to uh, the old guitar player Black Dahlia's house, he had the SLO 100 Saldano. It was like the fucking yeah. shit of the shit. It was like, and he had a fucking, he had a tube screamer in front of it. That's how he used it. And it sounded Didn't fucking it. amazing. It sounded so <laughs> good. Like a clean boost in front of that. Like it was yeah. like, but the thing about Soldano though, that, that I always heard and that he told us too, was like, you don't want to take those on tour though. Cause they're not tour amps. They're not ready. They're not like a PV. They're not gonna, like a fit. They're not, they're not like a triple X or a, it's not a road dog. Yeah. As far as can't like take a beating. Yeah. They can't take a beating at all. So, yep. I mean, but they, the, the tone is amazing and the, the diesels are amazing and there's so many like cool tones out there, but yeah, what you were saying, like people giving you shit about having like a, a tube screamer. That's like the potatoes, fucking secret. Dude. That's the secret Meme ingredient potatoes. right there. Yeah. It's like pushing the fucking tone, pushing the signal going into the amp and then lower the gain. And then you sound great. That's the step. It right. cleans up the low end. Exactly. All the, all the spaghetti in the low end gets cleaned yeah, all up. Those goddamn what? spaghetti. All the spaghetti in I, the I mean, end. is that what like a bad way to put it? Mean? You it know what I mean? All the, all the floppy it's... shit. Oh yeah. yeah all the floppy. Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. just, Oh, cleans up it all compresses the... It compresses it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Just like, Tony, man, you awake? Is it a facelift? <laughs> Anthony perked up when he heard spaghetti. I'm, I'm perked up. I'm sorry. Spaghetti? <laughs> my, Sicilian, my Sicilian heritage just made me be like, hey, dude, what, dude, who's got the garlic? <laughs> Yo, bread, dude. Sicilian too? <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. My last name's right, well, Trapani. It's in uh, a, a town in Sicily. Better not oh. mess with you then, Good. I guess. Yeah, dude. And he has like three I have, I have, I have my, I have my, dude, I have my dad's last name. Guys, so. you guys are talking gear. This I'm a vocalist. Of course I'm gonna fucking get shark eyes You're when you guys are talking this. Oh, he's he's oh you did that a while ago, but it's all <laughs> when? What at what point? Let's just talk oh, about microphones for like twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, dude, all this so all, all like, like, the gear tech stuff. You're acting, is like, gonna... you're acting like it's I'm sorry. Like it is. No, here. no, don't don't worry about me. <laughs> oh, it is. I'm in the background this right is, this now. This is like this is like an hour ago. Joel, Joel. <laughs> this is the thing. This is the thing. Oh, think, oh, this is like okay. a if I, if I paid Hulk attention to all these guys, guy. I could find all the funny faces. I thought you just had like an avatar on your phone right there. I didn't even know. <laughs> the way that looked it, pixelated on your phone, it looked like a character yeah. you would choose Anthony? in Tony Hawk. Anthony? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm Sicilian too. What up, brother? To, you need to, to get out to the homeland, to dude. To a point. To a point. What does that mean? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Anthony's like 100 percent motherfucker. When I when I when I feel like it. So. There you go. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's no, no, no yeah. I'm half and half. My mom's 100 percent Italian. Uh, you're more than me, it. actually. Dude, Satriano so. is her last name, but that's oh, not. Oh, I love the guitar player. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. I love the guitar player. I've seen Satriani at a uh, Warfield, dude. Fucking Dude. tore it up. Fuck yeah. I've seen him more times than I can count. Wait, wait. Do we got any Holdsworth fans here? Oh, God. No. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no one. Not, yeah. yeah. Who's that? I, I think he's about. literally been brought up like I've never heard of him. The last like four or five episodes and like going like deep. deep. On, we go deep on Holdsworth. So, yeah, I love him. Harry, you've never yeah. heard of Holdsworth? No, nah, I never heard of him. Alan Holdsworth, yeah. dude, check it out, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's trolling, oh, okay. but he's actually, <laughs> but he's not, a, he's not. In it. No, nah, but no, nah, I'm not. I'm not in it. But yeah, I know. I know who he is. He's what ridiculous. He's ridiculous. He is I should. I, I do need to do a deep dive on him. You know who my favorite guitar player is? Uh, is Tony McAlpine. I'm just guessing. Fred I mean, no, 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 no. He's sick. No, he's sick. I'm just that's John, a random one. John Petrucci. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I gotta give it to you. Or. To him. I'm a, to him. I'm a, <laughs> I love <laughs> for sure. He's super, super fucking rad. Nice. I've met him at a NAM and shit. Super fucking cool, dude. And it's, uh, it's not because of the oh, beard. No, sorry. I'm just kidding. No, no, it's not because of the beard. It's not because <laughs> of uh, Dream Theater. It's just because of his playing, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It's a solid. Liquid like, Tension's great, too, man. Liquid Tension. Oh, really yeah, yeah. I saw, I mean, that, uh, yeah. I don't want to say it again two episodes in a row, but. King Crimson the other night, and uh, uh, Tony Levin, the bass player of Liquid Tension, was is in that band. It's fucking amazing. Oh but, yeah, yeah. But dude, I, I personally am more of a Symphony X, like uh, Michael Romeo kind of guy. I don't know, you guys. Know oh Michael well, Romeo? yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, I, I, I take. I don't know. Well. Petrucci's great, but I feel like yeah, yeah. He's just is like, that the Odyssey like, era? 
Yeah. Oh no, I like the 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 brand new album that just came out. I mean, just came out in 2015. But did he but... play in the Odyssey album too? Oh no, he's no. the guy. That's Symphony he's X. He's the much. guy. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> you guys no. fans of a uh, Spiral Architect by chance? Oh fuck yeah! Oh, oh fuck yeah. yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Cuts there. Yeah. That's, that's really the shit, dude. I I. That's like some that touches a lot of cynic. Um. But it's a lot to arena. take in. It is a lot to take in. I was I pushed that shit hard, dude. I remember even Josh wasn't ready for it when I came. Well, the singing was it. kind of like off putting a little bit, right? That was the yeah. Thing yeah that, that was that was hard for me when it first came out, and then like I was like, at that time, that was when I wanted to hear like riff salad, like nothing repeat ever, and I was like, oh my god, this is insanity. And I went back and listened to it again recently, and I was like, man, I. It's crazy. I still remember this because it is so all over the place, but it is mm-hmm. nothing short of like musicianship 101, dude. Like, Killer yeah. fucking record, dude. Shredders. You guys ever heard of Presidents of the United States of America? <laughs> the band? Peaches. Dude, you guys ever heard of Peaches? That's by... my favorite fucking artist <laughs> of all time. Like, those Biggest guys. Shredder, dude. Dude, okay. dude right. fucking hit, so like, a, like two chords a song, dude. It was like two insane. strings, right? So uh, I, can, I can say this. Uh, TVV to violently vomit was invited to play full terror assault. We can't play it. Uh, sorry guys out there in Chicago or, um, why, Illinois, why? or Indiana, whatever. We can't play it. Um, but I looked at the fucking festival. It's like Exodus headlining misery index, MOD devourment. And then Michael Angelo Baccio is playing. Yo, I saw that oh, too. Isn't shit. that crazy? I saw that. I was like, dude, I want to go now. I know. I'm what down. The fuck, dude. <laughs> Yo, I saw. Who's that, who that? that guy from? Can I tell you? Can I tell you something? Rich I saw from. him. I saw him. I went to Nam in 2014, I believe. So I went to the whiskey, and I went for like some all star jam or whatever. Some 1997 beat up ass red Ford Windstar pulls up just out front of the club while I'm outside smoking a cigarette. I'm like, okay, well, who's this? Michelangelo Batio gets out, all his gears in the back. He's loading his own shit in. And I was like, damn, my hero is just like doing it DIY right now. And did, he went in. Ask, and did, you ask him, it. did you ask him, did you go like, could you, can you drive? 55 i don't know if you know from that old <laughs> no no, that, no, that, no i did not <laughs> but it was but it was so crazy i was just like yo michelangelo batio and he was just like in the most beat up car and i'm like damn that's what i have to look forward to as a musician who's <laughs> like one of the gnarliest this, shredders ever yeah it was like the, yeah exactly and like he had all his thickest guitars in the back he's carrying in no way. And yeah, he Double crushed it. Neck. And then I was like, yo, give me a picture. And he was like trying to hit on some girl at the bar. And he was like, I fucking can't stand you. <laughs> like all I wanted was like a photo. I was like, dude, it's like, just give me a picture. I got it. He was so mad. I got to get a picture with you. He was <laughs> mad even after uh, the picture. He was well, just like, nah, ah, because here, like, I, like the only opportunity I had, I was like, dude, I need to get a picture with Michelangelo about you. Yeah, yeah. Like I have that's, to like, that's street I don't red. care. I don't care. You'd, yeah, yeah. And like, he was hitting on some girl and like, I interrupted him. And he was like, bro, like you're the worst person ever, <laughs> which is like, I, I would do the same thing, but like, like you're, you like, it's not I would my take fault. That you're as Michelangelo about yeah. you. Dude, yeah, it's not my fault. Story like that. My fault you are you. <laughs> Wouldn't she be in? Yeah, it's you know? not my fault. You're you. That's better yeah. than the autograph that was Michelangelo like <laughs> dissing you because it's kind of cheesy and like he's kind of oh, weird. Oh, dude, he like, hated. He hated. Yeah, yeah. Me. It's kind of like fun. Dude. You get like dissed by Michelangelo Betty. I'm gonna be down. It's like Dimebag trying to give you know Yingving Malmstein donuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't like fucking donuts. Savage. That's a good one. But I think it's so great that Batty has been like adopted by the like hard extreme metal community enough to get booked on these you know full terror assault it's kind of like a i don't know it's kind of like a joke it's probably it's i mean I'm, i know michael is a shredder and he's amazing but like obviously he's the cheesy as fuck and like it doesn't really like it's kinda, about, dude. but like, uh, everyone yeah. knows everyone yeah, it's like it's, it's everyone like wants to see it with it's it, it's an inside joke with all guitar players. Like we want to see him shred, but like the songs are pretty funny. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Like the songs I wanna are a little wacky. I wanna I wanna see him in his gold gym shirt. Exactly. Like, yeah, I wanna I wanna see I wanna see the belt guitar. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I want, all I want to see some double neck, <laughs> double neck action. That's he's what I want to see. He's dude. an entertainer for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I feel like it. Rob's got Rob. You got something? I feel I'm like down. you grabbed something. I grabbed my grab. water. Oh, sick, dude. What what color is it? Purple? Sick, dude. Yeah, it is purple. Mm-hmm. Purple as water, dude. It's <laughs> cool. Fuck yeah. I feel like you left that at my house a lot. I have. Brian, so let's guys. talk about the water bottle, dude. So uh let's not talk so about the water where did you buy it? Did you get it from uh like Walmart? <laughs> Amazon. <you> <laughs> don't don't take the bait, dude. <laughs> Two day shipping, dude. Yeah. I'm listening, I'm, drunk. I'm listening to Joe. Let's 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 start wrapping things up so we can yeah, have yeah. the post the post pod. We gotta have the switch, post pod. We gotta hang out. Dude. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna smash and we're gonna. Cry. Right. Well, fuck yeah, dude! You guys, I'm stoked on you guys coming out and hanging out with us. And I know you guys are gonna be crushing in the future, hitting the road, and fucking that new album's fucking it's awesome, fire. dude. Fucking, it's right. I feel like Thank it's gonna you make for a, having gonna... us. I, I told you earlier, dude, it meant a lot having us. It really did. Yeah, totally. I'm stoked you guys came on. It's fucking awesome. Your new album's rad. Yeah, fuck yeah. Fucking, you, you know, fucking, I feel like I'm saying, I'm still saying it, and I'm still fucking pushing out there. You're, I mean, this album's going to be amazing, but your next album, you're going to be like headlining shit. I'm just saying. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Now are you going to push it. us to actually do that? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> fuck, just cool. fucking do it, dude. I got, I got Thanks. fucking Facebook. I can, I can throw messages He's your way and push cool. you guys. <laughs> cool. <laughs> No, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it for you. I'm gonna do it for you. Right? Keep Joel's going, kind man. of a genie. I don't want you to be wrong. You. Put us yeah, on yeah. the list when it happens, dude. Yeah, come to California. Let's rage here, dude. We got fucking yeah. good places yeah. to hang out. You can stay at my house. Let's fucking rage. Play some shows out here. We'd love to host you guys. That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. thank you again for to... having us. Yeah, no problem, guys. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah, so like Joel said, thanks for hanging out with us this week. Um Thank you to the subscribers. Thank you to everybody who hung out with us just this week. If you want to hang out more weeks, you can. Uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that shit. Come hang out with us there as well. Uh, We'll be here next week. And we love you guys. Rock on.